<laughs> so, a little over a month ago now, a video was made on me that uh, basically took the cake, took the trophy, the Guinness Book World Record, if you will, as possibly the worst, most bad faith, and most negatively responded to call-out video and hit piece of all time. And that was a YouTuber by the name of DJ Mule's call-out video on me. Um, now, it was a call-out video on multiple other people, but I was certainly the main, um, you know, the main target of the video. And uh, it was very, very bad. Uh, filled with abuse apologia and unironic sexism and double standards and just very obvious, uh, du like, just the person in question very clearly hates me for some, like, maligning social reasons or something. I have no idea. I don't know what I did to this guy. Um, there are theories that he just really likes Bad Bunny and uh, wanted to simp for her. Uh, I don't know if that's true, but definitely did look a little bit like that, um, if I'm being honest. Uh, and, you know, just overall, DJ Mule was just kind of not great at defending any of the arguments he wanted to make in his video against me. Um, everyone I've seen, even Destiny, trashed the video. Yeah, like, I, I saw... I have not watched Destiny's coverage of it yet because, like, there's just so many people who've covered the video. I, I don't know, like, I, I just don't know if I want to watch through all of it again, you know, because I've watched, like, two people covered already. Um, but uh, apparently, like, just going off the title, the video is, like, just going off the thumbnail, like, the thumbnail alone kind of, like, I think framed me in a fairly positive light. So I can appreciate that. So, like, that goes to show just how bad this video by DJ Mule was. Um, and in fact, I guess it's it's demonstrated itself as such a bad video that people have gone out and not just made response videos to the video. No, no, no. They have made full on character exposés of DJ Mule. And apparently, let's just say these expose videos are a lot better, more well researched and have a lot more ground to stand on than D DJ Mule's video on me. Now, uh, this video has been sent to me quite a bit. It is by a, um, a YouTuber that I can already tell has a very, very bright future ahead of them named Ecofish, a channel that you all need to subscribe to right now because they only have 1,980,000 uh, subs. They are 20,000 subs away from 2,000. Go subscribe. Go subscribe. Get them the 2K. There is no excuse. Literally 30 subs away from 2K, or sorry, 20 subs away from 2K. Literally no excuse not to go watch the video, like it, subscribe. Just go go send support to the video, because we're about to react to some of it, not all of it, it's very long, some of it, on stream, and I would feel remiss not to, one, send a significant amount of credit and support to the channel, and two, to watch the whole thing on stream and not to leave, um, you know, some of it for you guys to go watch yourself, to give the watch time to the original video, to give the views, to give the support, because it really does matter, especially with channels like this that are very, very clearly have a bright future ahead of them, but just need the YouTube algorithm to give them that first push they need. Um, go be that first push. Give them that first push that, the, that they need in the algorithm. This channel, if YouTube gives them a chance, will blow up. All they need is the support. Go send it, all right? Because uh, this video seems pretty good, you know? And uh, they're calling out DJ Mule, so I'll admit I've got a bias. Go send support. Uh, with that said, though, I've had a lot of people tell me to watch this video. It is very long. <laughs> it is very long. We cannot watch all of it. It is three and a half hours long. We'll probably give it a good 30 minutes to an hour of it a watch. I'm going to give most, sorry, I'm going to leave most of it though for you guys to go watch in your own time because one, that's a lot for me to watch on my own. And two, um, God knows, I, I, I don't, I don't think, I, I don't think that I want to take away the watch time from the channel. Um, you know, like I, there's, there's like watch time plays a big part in channel, like monetization, um, getting like more views, getting the channel bigger. So yeah, we're gonna watch an hour of it. And, uh, yeah, I'll send you guys to watch the rest. And we'll probably wrap up. This will most likely be the last stream of the day. So let's get into it. I'm excited. It's getting dark. 
Are we Stoner that sits there and goes, Hey, you ever seen a chimp pile of gel on DMT? We don't need a brain force chugging steroid smacking moron to show us this, you know? Why should I care? I would simply have a celebratory wank. There's one thing that's extra telling in this video. He says that woke schools need to be de-radicalized in the same way that Nazis do. Yeah, this is my uh, big woke school moment, eh? Sorry. Possession of methamphetamine. Somebody clip this. Somebody needs to fucking clip this. Holy shit, somebody fucking clip that. Oh, you're kidding me. You measly little fucking liar. This is empathy. My God, no DD, no makeup set. Just sweep it all under the carpet. Don't even think about the poor, homeless ex-girlfriend. I'd be lying if I said that people didn't go too far online. Absolutely they do. I've seen hundreds and thousands of babies' first political opinion. Five dollars a month! You know, the bad drug. The, all the crazy, unhinged druggies do. All the crazy, unhinged druggies that steal things, and hurt people, and rob people, and rape people. Just so they can get their fix. Most people in Kyo's community know this attitude that she has. I'm getting, like, reminded how fucking deranged and bad this video was. Like... <laughs> During this intro, good god. Holy fuck. That really- <laughs> No wonder this video got as much shit as it did. God, I'd like- I feel like my brain had blacked out how bad it was. You know, I I'd like let myself forget how horrible of a response video to me this was. Jesus. Is a stream for some. She's got one of the nicest, most understanding communities I've ever been a part of. Yeah, the, the speed run back right is funny. And shines a light on issues that are locally underrepresented. And the online left is Twitch based. How are you? It's me, the internet's Howdy. favorite political e-boy. And uh, as most of you know, recently there was a hit piece uh, released on a different YouTuber named Xander Hall, and That's I wanted to me. talk about it because, well, it's the worst thing that I've ever seen in my entire life. So why am I talking about this? Well, um, I hate liars. That's True. pretty much it. I hate liars. And, you know, since I'm the main character, obviously, uh, it's up to me to talk about it and to make a video about it. So True. here we are. So, who are the key players in this game? Well, we have Xander Hall, who's a political live streamer, like I said. He has around 70,000 subscribers, usually does politics, drama, stuff like that. Uploads a segment, cool, whatever. And then we have the man-child who released the video called, uh, uh, Clout Chasing Piece of Garbage. Bazinga. Why do we keep burping? Do I have a problem? Do I have a gastro problem? Oh, I see. Like, at first I was, like, burping in videos as, like, a joke, haha, but uh, now it's gotten to the point where I, I can't stop. I'm gonna be real, I, I legitimately, unironically, just... I drink so much Monster Energy and carbonated beverages on stream at this point to keep myself awake for these <clears throat> seven hour and 13 minutes so far streams uh, that I like my my stomach just sometimes I'll just be in the middle of a sentence and then out of nowhere it just hits me with the burp. I used to think that like people who just out of nowhere burp while speaking. It's like, how do you do that? But like, nah, Nah, it just happens sometimes, you know? You're just speaking, and, and you don't mean it, and it just comes out of nowhere. It's like a sneeze or a cough that you just could not have seen coming and had no chance of prepping for. So yeah, I, I get that. I, I've seen, I've felt it. I should see a doctor. Anyway, so DJ has around 5,000 subscribers. Um, He pretty much just uploads powwows with his friends. That's pretty much all he does. So we're going to go over this video, and before we get into it, I just want to say I'm not really going into this video to specifically defend Xander Hall. Uh, this is more of me going in to show you that uh, you. DJ is a lying, manipulating abuser, and he should not be trusted in any sense of the term. And so, DJ, if you watch this, which you probably won't because you can't handle criticism, um, I'm autistic, I have ADHD, I'm Mexican, I'm kind of femme-coded. So as a white boy, as a cis male oh, white boy, you should sit your white ass down and listen True. to the voices of marginalized people since you seem to care about it so much. So, here we go. Oh. I'll that's right, DJ Mule. Sit your white ass down and listen, just like me. Also, also, um, as we go through this, you might be thinking, wow, he he's he's really going over like every sentence that DJ says, and yeah. Holy shit. I like to be thorough. It's the it's the autism in me. Are you gonna be ableist? Is that what you're gonna do? And also, who would I be if Please. I left out context? I'd be like DJ. I could be making content about how leftists can start organizing, or I could be doing more stuff about unions, or, you know, how to get involved with direct action, but, of course, the algorithm doesn't like that stuff. It loves that is stuff true. like this. 
drama, nonsense. And it's all because of a group of guys that monopolize the online left-wing politics space, are increasingly ineffectual, perpetuate harmful behaviors, and haven't actually done that much to change that scene since Gamergate. So right off the bat, we have a uh, weasel boy trying to blame debate bros for the reason that drama is popular. Yep. No. Stay. June, stay. June, stay. Stay, 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 stay. Come here. Is it gonna be a dog or a cat? Dog or a cat? Dog or a cat? It's a doggy. It's a doge. I heard the dog waggle and I heard the ears doing the, you know how, you know when a dog does, does the thing and the, and the ears like slap on the side of the cheeks and the head and everything? Um, you know, it, I heard that. I heard the dog do that and I knew it was going to be a dog. What the dog doing? Being adorable. Just going to sit there? Okay. So I right off animals. the bat, we're starting with a strong one. We have DJ trying to blame awesome. debate pros for the reason that drama is more popular than videos about unions. As if Jax Films didn't make an entire video titled Drama is More Popular Than Content six years ago. Literally yeah. the first sentence in this video is to try and poison the well and blame the bait bros for drama. And he says how bad it is and he says it's terrible and yet he's doing it. Hmm? Oh, I don't like debate bros, uh, so I'm just gonna blame them for everything. Yeah, cause, uh, uh, me no likey, me no likey, so I'm gonna blame them for everything. So. To be clear, the debate bro phenomenon on the left is quite literally a reaction to the prominent, uh, wow, I forgot this is a boss that I have to kill. <laughs> My little asshole's getting caved in by a knoll. So as we go through this, you're going to realize that DJ- Um, no, in all seriousness, um, like, the whole debate bro thing was a reaction to the right's, like, insistence on using this, like, what the right really likes to do is weaponize machismo and, like, things that mostly men value. Um, society puts a lot more value on the actions of men, much more so than women. Um, and so, behaviors typically associated with men are typically seen as powerful and strong and smart and correct and good and reasonable and logical and well thought out. Even if not all of these check marks are, are you know, boxed, it's still there, right? And so you get this situation where this heavy overvaluing of like masculine, uh, you know, being able to yell over people, talk over people, get them caught in like debate traps and stuff. That's the kind of thing that a lot of guys that are susceptible to the right wing propaganda like. And uh, it's not all exclusively bad, but that's like the type of prop. That's the type of uh, uh, thing that the left has only recently, it feels like, begun to realize is effective, you know, using the aesthetics of the right without the negative aspects of it um, uh, uh, in order to push good policies, good ideas, good politics, as opposed to the bad ones. Really like this video so far, by the way. Jay has a very bad habit of blaming things on people that are out of their control or saying something is okay and then immediately lampooning that person for doing said thing. That is it's, true. It's, it's it's fun. What the fuck is that? Is that a bug? That's a bug. I see you, bug. You come over here. You're fucking bait. Anyway. I have a bug in my room too. But the CIA put it from there. his alt-right pipeline video where he congratulates himself on not being a fascist anymore. What a cool and normal thing to be proud of. Well done for doing the bare minimum, bro. If you're on the left that doesn't really follow the debate scene, you're probably wondering what all the fuss is about. But if you're into the debate scene, you'll probably know him as wannabe Vosh, as this is what most debate fans have been calling him for the last few years. People call him things like the Zuma version of Vosh, or that he's copying Vosh's style, which is hilarious to be honest, because Vosh copied Destiny's style and Destiny. Can I can I just show a funny meme? I just, I just want somebody to just take, make this into a meme and just use it as the response whenever somebody calls me like bootleg Vosh or something, because there's really no better response than just pointing this out, okay? Explain this, liberals. Xander Hall joined March 28th, 2015. Vosh joined January 6th, 2019. Explain that, libs. Explain this. Who's copying who? 
Hmm. <laughs> uh, I like that. That's a good meme. Someone make that into a meme. It's funny. Then he copied the modern debate format, and they copied the Greco-Roman debate format. I digress a little bit, but you see what I'm saying here. This is a bit of an obtuse thing to criticize him for. When you scroll through Xander Hall's YouTube page, there is actually a lot of cool leftist stuff on there. See, he's making videos here about how Trump is bad, he's sticking up for trans people a lot, and that's all good. I do that However, sometimes. you'd be right in thinking that amongst these thumbnails, something just doesn't feel quite right. The more and more you scroll, the more and more you start to see things like this. Uh, yeah, like, Twitter disc. Okay, not that it's necessarily entirely relevant, but I do feel it's worth bringing up because DJ Mule specifically says my thumbnails look weird or chuddy. Um, my... The the person the person who made those thumbnails is is trans and LGBT and stuff. So like that's not like ob that's obviously not like on its own a very good argument. But I feel like that alongside the entire body of work that I do and the entire context of my career, I, I feel like that along as a specific response to the thumbnails and how they look. I, I don't know. It, 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 like, what, what do you want? You know, the thumbnails do well. This course could be a bit myopic and wrong, but why are you focusing on this? Okay, that one's a little bit extra. I don't know what that's all about. Uh, oh, okay, he's just made a video in one face about one of my friends. Oh, and there's another one. Okay, it's just like obsessed with drama and... Okay, this is fucked up. What is this guy's purpose on this platform? Is he a leftist? Or is he just a leftist some of the time and a piece of shit whenever it suits him? Huh, let's 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 take a look at your content, DJ. Let's let's see what you got going on, huh? Hmm. Uh oh. Oh oh. Oh no. Oh that's terrible. Oh yikes. That is incredibly fucked up. How could you do that? As a leftist, how are you going to make a video on drama but not make a video about the railway workers who are gonna go on strike? You open this video by saying that drama is more popular. You know, it's well, I don't I don't know if um if Ecofish like added that on purpose, but like funnily enough, I covered that. I, I don't know if Ecofish brought that up and is going to mention that I covered the railroad thing. I don't know if this video was made before I covered it or not, but I actually covered the striking railroad workers and about how they were talking about how their conditions like the conditions and the working environment for them is literally worse than it has ever been for some of these workers who are like 25, 30, 40 year veterans with these railroad companies. Like to give you an idea, that means working conditions are worse than they were in like the fucking like 60s, 70s, 80s and shit for these railroad companies. COVID has overworked them. Their hours and working conditions are fucked and they're striking. Um, or at least they were when, when I made the video. I don't know what the current developments are, but yeah. Um, I covered this after, okay, cool. Sorry, I just thought that was a cool little tidbit. ...than videos about unions. But if it really mattered to you, I did you a video wouldn't care it. about the cloud, DJ. Go you wouldn't make it. the drama video. You just keep on making videos about unions. But of course, you gotta throw your hat into the ring. You gotta, you gotta add your little two cents. And you know what? It's worth that amount. I don't think DJ really realizes that to bring the maximum amount of people over, if you just make videos about unions or the fall of Soviet Russia or whatever, Peep normies, fucking normies, fucking normies aren't going to want to click on that video. You know what they are going to want to click on? A video about Dream that has a left-wing analysis to it. You make videos about normie content that then brings them in. Why do you think I have a video about GTA 5? Why do you think I have yep. a video about Fallout 4? Mainly because I make whatever kind of content that I want. But also, it's because if I just sat here and read the Communist Manifesto, who's going to listen? Who's gonna who's gonna click on that? Yeah. Can we take a look at our bread tube? Do you guys remember when bread tube was getting really big? And uh and one of the biggest like locations for like these growing content creators um that were like trying to grow an audience in lefty spaces was our bread tube. Um now I used to upload my new videos there, um, you know, post them there. Uh, as most, like, basically, our bread tube was a place where, like, small, especially smaller, left tube content creators could spam up their new videos there to grow an audience and, like, spread discussion. And when that was happening, the subreddit was massive. The subreddit was huge. Literally, like, tens of thousands of upvotes on the top posts per on that day. Like, bread tube was exploding. The subreddit was huge, okay? Literally fucking huge, mate! Fucking huge!
Let's take a look at the BreadTube subreddit now. By the way, I got banned from posting my videos there a while ago, so okay. I guess I can't move this onto the screen. There we go. Um, let's take a look at them. So the highest uh, liked post is Jewish journalist Katie Halper censored and fired after telling the truth about Israeli apartheid. 732 likes. Okay. Or upvotes. Uh, 22 upvotes from 13 hours ago. The Greek miracle. Exceptionalism in the ancient world. 11 uh, upvotes from 12 hours ago. Dave Chappelle is monstrous. 23 upvotes. Iran protests over killing of Masa Amini. Uh, no upvotes from two hours ago. Illegal logging. Uh, three upvotes. Diving into the stage. So I'm not like, none of these content creators or anything are bad. Or I'm not like implying if there's anything wrong with this content or the creators. But I think it's important to point out is that like this subreddit fucking died. And a large part of it was because of the moderation. The moderators were a bunch of tankies and woke scolds that ended up like calling off Vosh fans and like libs and uh, uh, like any parts of the left that had fallen into the community that they didn't like. They banned me from posting my new videos there. Like, th like that kind of stuff, you know, because I was friends with Vosh um, and people like were nonstop complaining anytime one of my videos would get posted there by one of my fans. Um, and it got to the point where banning, like posting of any of my videos or any Vosh videos or anything like that ended up getting banned or at least would like be highly frowned upon. Like it got to the point where nothing but these really like analytical video essays were getting posted there, which are good and it's good content, but it was very different in the type of content that was getting posted there and really blowing up and getting attention and causing the R tube thread to get really big on Reddit and the, or, or subreddit in the first place to get large. Um, it just doesn't seem like they valued that same type of content anymore. And it just so happens around that same time, we really started to see uh, BreadTube subreddit start to fall apart, as well as the broader left online uh, lose a lot of its traction. Okay. That's what I thought. Here, here, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me go, let me go, let me, I'll be right back. <coughs> but with the development of industry, the proletariat not only increases in numbers, it becomes concentrated in greater masses. Its strength grows and feels that strength more. I'll show the analytics later of how many people decide to click off during that, because I guarantee you, it's a lot. Because that shit's boring. But you see, Ugh. Ugh, I'm nuts. DJ doesn't care about bringing people over to his side. He thinks it's a joke to try and bring liberals or people on the right over to the left, because all he views this as is a social club. All he cares about is using left-wing really? aesthetic, so that way he can have a little powwow with his little e-friends, and that way he can feel self-righteous and better about himself. He doesn't care about bringing people over. He doesn't care about spreading a message. All he cares about is making videos for people who already agree with him. You want to know why Gamergate was so popular back in the day? It's because these... I almost, I almost said a naughty word. It's because these rightoids were like, hey, um, here's a video about how uh, the, the Last of Us, the Last of Us has Big Muscle Girl, uh, and that's bad. And then they would go on a 30 minute rant, or tirade, if you would, about why muscular women are destroying society and all, and everybody is a soy boy and um we're they'll go on like what, what they'll say is shit like why can't women be beautiful anymore that's what they'll say they'll go on some rant about how like having muscular women in media means that like women aren't allowed to be beautiful anymore you know one of my favorite things too was the right's massive flip when it came to gina carano i don't know if you guys remember but Cheetah Carano got a lot of shit when she was first, like, cast in The Mandalorian because muscle woman bad. And then she came out as, like, a conservative and started complaining about, like, like the vaccine and started talking about how she's a Trump supporter. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, everyone loves Gina Carano. All of a sudden, all the Chud YouTubers are making videos defending her from the left. Hmm. We're all gonna die and be replaced by Arab people because, uh, muscle woman. Do you not understand how this works? Do you not understand how the YouTube game works? Get your head out of your ass. And he hasn't even given an argument. Yeah, he just said, it. oh, thumbnail, thumbnail title bad. Th th thumbnail title bad without actually watching it because he wants to gaslight you into thinking that these are bad. Th the funny thing is, he's, do he's literally doing the YouTube equivalent of judging a book by its cover. Like, th is, there, is there really no other... 
And, and the cover isn't even indicative of what he claims. Like, maybe if my titles were really inflammatory, right? Like, if I tried to make my video, my thumbnails look all but, like, conservative propaganda videos just to kind of, like, bring in the right-wing audience and to shock lefties, but then, like, they watch the video and they're shocked by the actual content of the video being left-wing. Like, maybe if I did that, I would understand the criticism. But, like, the thumbnails aren't even inflammatory. N neither are the titles. At least not towards anyone on the left. It's, if anything, very inflammatory to the people on the right. You know, I've... I've made videos outright referring to certain conservative figures as being predators, you know, like, I, like that, that's, that's, that's pretty spicy, but certainly not towards the left, at least not in my view. Titles and thumbnails are meant to bring in people. True. What the fuck? What the fuck? I mean, if you want to play that game, I can play that game. Uh, in, in this video, he he says that he likes whipping his wiener out in front of children, and that's why Kink belongs at Pride. It's, yeah, don't, don't, don't fact check me, because I would never lie and manipulate you. Um, in, in this video, he, he call he calls Dave Rubin the F-slur. Yeah, he does. And he says oh, all, all gay people should go to the gulag. He oh, does, no. he says that. Yeah, Whoa. it's true. Just believe me, and, and I won't show you any clips. I because do. Because you should just believe every word that I say. Just believe me. A lot of people on this really? website have a real big problem of just believe me, bro. If he's a leftist, surely he knows that platforming people with strict ideologies becomes more of a battle to convert the opposing person's audience will actually have achieved nothing because the supporters of your point of view stay the same and the supporters of your opponents stay the same. But the new impressionable viewers that haven't been exposed to either ideology have now been exposed to a violent ideology that will influence them easier and easier depending on their material conditions and prior exposure to fascist ideology in our culture and media. Everything else. Everything else. Hey everyone, it's I like the implication that my audience is susceptible to right wing propaganda. Um, the vast majority of my fans are are ex conservatives and ex juds, or part of like groups that are just, like, d I've got like a lot of my fans are ex conservatives that know the ins and out of this propaganda already, right? A lot of them themselves are part of like groups that are literally being attacked nonstop by the right. D d does it? Does he really think that, like, my trans fans are going to become sympathetic to, like, transphobic uh, arguments while they're actively having their rights taken away by the government here in America? D d like, I, I don't know. It just feels so contrived. Mule here. What Mule has forgotten is that there are probably a lot of people watching this video who don't understand why the platforming of bad ideas is bad. Debate bros have been taking up space in the online left for some time now, and a lot of their content focuses space. on debating fascists or conservatives on you mean being whether more popular? trans people should exist or whether there is actually a white genocide happening. Their entire modus operandi seems to be that we need to convert people who think differently to us. They're obsessed with this idea, even though it was proven wrong a hundred years ago by Vladimir Ilyich oh Lenin, God, who here said we get this. It. Why should we here go we to go. Kautsky? About to get it. reply to us, and we would have to reply to his reply. There's no end to that. It will be quite enough for us to announce that Kautsky is a traitor to the working class and everyone will understand everything. And of course, multiple real instances of people that these nerds have debated who have remained steadfast in their these fascist nerds. opinions. So there you have it. Now you're briefed on the debate person, the type of leftist who simply thrives on drama and doesn't give one iota of shits as to whether people are actually doing on the ground organizing, activism, or doing anything progressive at all. They love leftism as an aesthetic as True. a word. Couldn't the same be said for, and I know this is going to sound like a bit of a stretch, but couldn't the same be said for, going over somebody else's video to quote unquote debunk it either on stream or making an entire dedicated video about it because if you really want to no i'm actually i think actually an even better question if i'm being honest is if talking about drama and doing like you know talk doing like weed and uh rambling about random culture topics isn't uh like real politics and everything why is what joe rogan and jordan peterson and all these right-wing figures do bad why is why is lefties making similar propaganda uh in terms of like the method not the content of the right why are these figures so dangerous to platform but us using their methods all of a sudden is bad if their methods work so well that just platforming them and arguing them as a danger, then why why is using their methods of of like convincing people? How is that bad? It literally makes no sense. His his arguments do not they they cannot coexist. Boil it down to the most simplest form. Going over somebody else's video is kind of just a one sided debate. They give their arguments in the form of an already pre made video, and then you give your arguments to quote unquote debunk it. So if you're not very good at that. <laughs> That's what you got started about um bro uh, <laughs> finally real? No. <laughs> uh oh. Come on, man. 
it's, it's hard to like. So couldn't someone just watch that video and go, oh, no, you're wrong. Uh, I'm going to believe the video that you just showed me. Because at the end of the day, it's pretty much the same thing. You're arguing with a video. But I mean, I guess he wouldn't have a problem with that because he has hours and hours and hours of content about it. He's literally doing like he's good at the live uh, the thing. This live is what I was talking format, about. By the he says thing bad, and then he makes a 90-minute video about drama. Again, maybe it's because he only views this as some kind of social club uh, for his little friends, for his little Wendy Wendy's. Uh, but if someone watches a debate, and they're say they're a Nazi, right, and they watch a Vosh video, and they're like, "Oh man, Vosh totally destroyed that Nazi. I'm a communist now. I hate to break it to you, but if someone watches a debate," and they're swayed from one extreme to the other over one debate, they didn't really care about their political ideologies to really? begin with. They weren't that- Like in reality, the way that this actually works, like the way that the de-radicalization, radicalization, whatever you wanna call it, rabbit hole works, it is a very slow, private, and um, and, and like sensitive time. Um, I, I don't know how to put it into words. Um, so it is very easy to think that it's like, oh, you watch a video or a debate and it just snaps, like a, a switch flips and you realize, oh, the right is wrong. No. Um, you are basically inundated with culture and politic, a political propaganda that pushes you into a certain niche of political like uh, messaging and it becomes your reality. Um, you don't even question it after a while. Once it like once the propaganda really sets in with, because the right just constantly floods you with anecdotes that make you assume this must be real. This must be a real issue. This must actually be a thing that's happening. Um, and you don't question it, really. But watching debates and watching content from people on the left that know what they're talking about breaks the echo chamber and breaking the echo chamber alone doesn't do it. But it is one step in the right direction that for not everybody but for a lot of people, ends up being what they needed. Um, and it starts them on a good path. Attached to them, again, the rest of the work is, view this as they an have to do it. So to you, it's as easy as taking off a t-shirt. But for the rest of us, we actually care about what we believe in. And we don't just change our opinions after one debate, to watch a debate, and then you're like, huh, that, man, that guy got owned, but maybe, maybe he was just having a bad day. Right? And maybe, maybe they watch another one, or maybe they click on a video and they're like, huh, maybe I should keep watching this guy. See, see what he says. See, see if there's anything that I oh, agree wow, with. I cannot and then they slowly this. over time move over because introspection and changing your opinion. Any Xander Hall gamers want to come help me with this uh, fucker? I'm getting my penis abendisted by a bendis here. I just got my penis bent by a bendis. Anyone want to avenge my my Venus after that absolute destruction I just experienced. I'm only level 25. We got some level 70 somethings out here that could probably help. Potentially, potentially. Oh, there we go. Look at that. There we go. Uh oh. There we go. Um invite Zargos. Let's go. Now this is gaming. Uh, Wilkes Gold, if you could invite Zargos uh, and Andhar, if you could. Or you can give me a group leader and I can invite them. We'll get back to the video in a second. I just want to get everybody uh, in the group really fast. I think four people can probably handle her. Nice, Zargos is in. And then I'll invite Andhar. There we go. All right. Um, we got to meet at New Hearth Glen. Uh, hell yeah, okay. I think four people will probably be enough for this. Uh, I'll resume the video really fast. Takes time, takes effort. You know that's a fake quote, right? It's a no, fake really, quote, yeah. That, it's a fake quote. Yeah, just full The on. only reference that I could find to that quote was a Newsweek article written by a libertarian conservative. Do you care that much about dunking on debate bros that you would use a fake Lenin quote by a libertarian conservative? And even if... Yeah. Even if... That was a real quote. Who gives a shit? I don't hold people as ideologues and follow their word as gospel. I don't take theory and treat it like the Bible. But hey, anything to push your- I love, I love that Walter White's on the cover there. Narrative, right? So earlier, you said this. He congratulates himself on not being a fascist anymore. What a cool and normal thing to be proud of. Well done for doing the bare minimum, bro. Which, apparently, changing your opinion is the bare minimum? 
challenging your worldview and the beliefs that you already have is the bare minimum. I hate to break it to you. The bare minimum is coming out of the womb, quoting Marx. To never have your ideals challenged. To never do any introspection and go, huh, maybe I was wrong. But hey, if, if you're not hey, if you're not quoting Marx uh, uh, right out of the womb, then you're not allowed in my pur puritanical uh, social club. You're not my will. You're not my friend, and I will not add you on Discord. Uh, you will not become one of my kittens if you ever had to challenge your own beliefs and do introspection. Because I live in an echo chamber. So heck off, heck off, uh, heck off, gay thoughts. Throwback. A revolutionary's job and a political commentator's job is to affect political power. It's to bring as many people over to your side as possible. But he doesn't care about that. He only cares about his little echo chamber, so that way he can have his little podcast with his friends. And they can have a little powwow, and they can circle jerk and talk, Oh, we're, we're real leftists. We're, we're, we, we're bad. bad. Capitalism bad. We, capitalism bad. Also, I find it really goddamn funny that he says, uses leftism as an aesthetic right after pulling the fake planning quote. <laughs> Okay, sure. There, there's a lot about the video that, like, watching it, there were moments where I was like, there's no way this isn't a meme. There's no way this guy isn't, like, secretly totally a fan of me and Vosh and is just out here making videos to try to make us look good. Because cause it, it was almost like it was made specifically crafted to be as easy for us to destroy as possible. Purely with the purpose of making us look better. Like me, Vosh, any debate bro that the video was generally talking about. Like it, it genuinely, genuinely, genuinely felt like it was specifically crafted to be content, perfect content for me to respond to, for Vosh to respond to, or Destiny to respond to, for anybody who wanted to respond to it critically to dunk on. It's actually wild. It, it's like content handed on a silver platter. <laughs> Okay, but what I do know of this kind of action that exists so far is that it's undertaken mainly by charities like Hope Not Hate, who tend to infiltrate telegram groups of fascists like the BMP or the EDL in the UK, who create disorder and sow dissent amongst the rank and file fashion movements who are losing faith in them due to the fact that they're not really addressing their material conditions and seem to be focused on something that is more of a losing battle. What is certainly not effective is nerds on the internet debating them, especially when those nerds, every now and then, let their masks slip a little bit and repeat the same fascist talking points they've been arguing against. Wait, so you're, you think but that a marginalized like person going up to a group of 20 fascists and trying to convert them that way is better than them sitting in their room and affecting people in the hundreds, in the thousands, possibly in the millions. Do you? By the way, it's extremely dangerous for LGBT people or people of any marginalized group to go on the front lines uh, arguing against those that literally do not see them as human and think that violence done upon them is not only justified, but is in fact a heroic behavior. Um, yeah, that's that's actually very fucking dangerous. So yeah, maybe maybe may, maybe it's good that like I'm a cis dude on on the internet that can tank a little bit of the aggro. You know what I'm saying? Not all of it, but a little bit of the aggro. You know, just a little bit of the aggro every once in a while. You know, I'm off tanking. Know what would happen if you had a marginalized person walk up to a group of fascists? They would go to Funky Town. If you know, you know. But you see. You view the world from your cis, white, male eyes. Just because you look like you can fit right into a group of Boogaloo boys doesn't mean that we can all walk up to a group of Boogaloo boys. You know what they would do to me? They would call me a fat, and then they would probably kick me in my nuts. I'm okay. I don't want to go up to a group of Boogaloo boys. I, I'm, I'm perfectly fine in, in my bedroom. That's why you should all arm yourselves, chat. Look at what happened to Keffels exactly. Is, Rogue Ho is Roadhog IRL with his vape? I don't know what you're talking about, Tree Palm. With my dog. With hello dog. No, as you can see no, here, the debate lords and the whole tends to actually just focus on drama, which is annoying because you can see from some of his other videos, he's right about some stuff, which is good. But then why does he focus on myopic things like people on Twitter not agreeing with him? Why does he use words like woke school and cry bully? What do those words even mean? Now, for a start, Joe what Rogan do is they not mean? a good interviewer. He's a stoner that sits there and goes, Hey, you ever seen a chimp pilot a jet on DMT? And this is the funniest thing too. All I said is that Joe Rogan is good at doing interviews. When I watch Joe Rogan say interview a physicist or like an actual well-regarded scientist, generally speaking, I find myself like actually pretty damn happy with his interviewing style. You know, like Joe Rogan asks a lot of the questions that I as the viewer would be like, huh, I wish I was in there with that person. I would ask them this. 
And then Joe Rogan asks them that. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like, by the time Joe Rogan finishes, like, interviewing some scientists, I'm like, yeah, I don't have any further questions. Like, he covered plenty of stupid questions, you know? But he covered every question, you know? He is a good interviewer. Part of why he is such a dangerous political demagogue is how good of an interviewer he is, you know? It's that he, like is so good at shutting up and just platforming people uncritically and allowing them to spew their bullshit. Not only that, but people respect what he has to say and what he believes so much that as he just sits here and, there and goes, uh-huh, oh, that's, that's real interesting. Wow, that's really interesting. That's all it takes for a shit ton of people to like take what that person he's platforming says seriously. Um, let's wait for the fourth person to get here. And uh, yeah, I just want to get a little further into the video. Um, I think the next... The last person in the group is. Are they in Northrend? Oh yeah, they're they're in uh, they're in in uh, Borean Tundra. They'll be here in a minute. And if he's irresponsible at platforming people, why then should he keep his platform? I think one of the funniest and most telling things about this video in particular is that Xanderhal is sat there in a Shadow the Hedgehog onesie. You know, Shadow the Hedgehog, the ambivalent, cool, and edgy character from the Sonic the Hedgehog series no. that doesn't really care about good or evil. He's too cool for that shit. Whilst Xanderhal is sat there being ambivalent and edgy and not really caring about good uh. or evil because he's too cool for that shit. But Joe Rogan literally asked every question I would have asked. And by the end of that episode of his podcast, I don't think there, was, there would be any questions I'd have left to ask that guy. Bro, you're a 23-year-old edgelord that got famous too quick. You're not a good interviewer either. And you're a 35-year-old man-child who's not- I, like, that, I wasn't even saying that I was a good interviewer. Like, I, all I was saying was that I thought Joe Rogan was good at interviewing people and when he interviewed a scientist, like, on a completely apolitical topic it was about like space and physics and stuff like an actual physicist i was like whoa wow i'm like he did a really good job interviewing that guy and he's his response is well you're not a good interviewer that's like me saying i thought this guy did a good job swimming and then their response is oh yeah well you're not a good swimmer either and it's like what uh oh okay not good at making takedown videos What's your point? Also, I am an ex-fan of the Joe Rogan experience, and in all the episodes that I watched, and I did watch a lot of Joe Rogan, most of the time, Joe just kind of sits there and goes, huh, wow. Yeah, huh. Like a yeah. good interviewer. Whoa. If Joe Rogan's a good interviewer, I'm literally the most best video essayist of all time on the internet. And I know I'm not. He opened this video by saying that he has to focus on drama because that gets more views. But but he, he I, I bet he has some excuse like oh uh, I'm I'm not I'm not focusing on drama I'm just uh, uh, doing a call out video and making the world a better place because uh if you're not exactly what uh how I think then you're a bad person and I don't want you in my social club because True. you are not pure enough yeah I, I guarantee you he has some dog shit excuse that he can pull out of his ass for that one it, it's different when he does it is it because you're a cis white male is that why it's different or is your head just so far up your own ass that you think anything that you do is right and everything that you disagree with is wrong. And by the way, if you don't know what those words mean, why are you taking offense to them? You obviously know what they mean. Grow up. Uh, uh, how are you gonna sit there in a, uh, black t-shirt and, uh, a, a ring on your in index finger and a chain? Uh, you're just, uh, you're, you're LARPing as like a, a punk. Uh, and that's, that's bad because punk people, uh, punk people bad. Yeah, uh, get owned, liberal. If you wear sh Shadow the Hedgehog, then you are, um, you are a bad person because Shadow the Hedgehog is bad person. Um, One of my favorite things about that quote, too, is that I looked at, I don't know anything about Sonic lore. I really don't. Like, the only reason that the, I, Idubs reference, by the way. Um, by the way, I think the, the accent that Idubs is doing is Old English, or, or no, it's like, yeah, it's Old English, right? And there's a language that's still around today that's like very similar to Old English. I saw a YouTube video about it, and and he goes there to buy a brun coup. I don't know. Chat. Someone knows. Somebody in chat knows what I'm talking about. He chose something specifically not racist. Yes, it is like it, it is definitely a a old old timey white people language uh, that that accent comes from. Idubs being based. All the way back in the day. Like he is now, because he he's a lot more based now. Sh Shadow, Shadow the Hedgehog is is bad guy. So if you wear onesie of Shadow the Hedgehog, you are Hitler because Shadow is Hitler. I can't believe we're already at this level of analysis.
I could have we got hit with it early in the video too. Like, I'm sorry if that sounds stupid and childish, but it, what am I supposed? What am I supposed to do? It, it, this is the level that we're at. It, it, you wear Shadow the Hedgehog, and you you would not make a a good uh, interviewer because oh wait, he has a British accent. Hello, you Sh Shadow the Hedgehog. Is that's not British. That just goes back to the other thing. Um. I, I feel like the best way to do impressions of British people is just to do a an orc. Just just do an impression of an orc from Lord of the Rings. Oi, maggot! What's it? What do you smell? The, the average turf. Average turf when they walk into a bathroom. What is it? What do you smell? Man flesh. Hello, my Shadow the Hedgehog is bad. Uh, my queen just died. Very nice. I, whatever. I lost the plot on that one. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. You, you, you say you used to watch Joe Rogan a lot. Huh. Why, why as a leftist were you watching Joe Rogan a lot? Huh? Were you not always a leftist? Were, were you, um, um, were you, um, uh, 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 just, just, wa just watching it to debunk it? Or why, huh? Huh? Huh, DJ? Hmm. Interesting. So when you used to watch Joe Rogan all the time, it's okay. But when anybody else does it, that's a no-no. They're always saying that lefties are too much for the average voter. And that's why they focus on myopic issues that like maybe five people have spoken about on Twitter.com. You know, after they've had baby's first political take and oh, they aren't geez. actually big talking points in the broader left. You see, what they're trying to do is shame lefties into being more palatable to the center left powers in electoral politics. Not once have these nerds considered that most lefties have abandoned electoral politics in favor of direct action and organizing. Because you know. Yeah, it's a problem. We're smart. But it always comes back to this optics shit. But no, the reason that they talk about Don't optics vote, all the time guys. is because they think that you can win fascists over to our side with good optics. You're starting to see how this is all a circle gang? Debate no. Nazis, have good optics, destroy- No, the fascists are lying propagandists who do not care about honesty. Their viewers, however, and maybe not every case, but a lot of the cases are victims of the propaganda. They are the ones who can be appealed to, the ones who can be reached. I was one of those people. I was one of those victims of propaganda. If you accept the fact, I, I I don't feel like I should be react like why am I responding to DJ Mule's statements right now? I don't know. Like the the point seems pretty clear. Like y y respond to the prop like the respond to the propaganda. Like debunk it. Don't like respond to it. You know, and, and don't allow them to like get by with it being what everybody believes as being like the carte blanche truth. Roy, all the lefties you have. We literally debunked. Of, like, a broadly held internet myth that that girl with the glasses that did the triggered face was, like, a mad triggered SJW. We watched the video and debunked one of the most, like, prevalent right-wing meme lies on the entire internet today. Like, this is a fact, it's a, maybe not, like, the most, it doesn't matter the most in the world, but I mean, I think it matters to a degree, you know? Bad optics. So, let's get into that last part. Ah, uh, yes. The very unimportant topic of Dream the Minecraft speedrunner, the man with millions of subscribers, yeah. he says in a video where he pulls up Twitter drama about a YouTuber with 70,000 subscribers. Wait, I can't, fuck, I can't even remember. Did I say Dream has millions or thousands? Well, you, you know who Dream is, whatever. Because you think this is a social club where you can have your little echo chamber full of your little e-friends, you don't care about making content to sway people over. You only care about making content for people who already agree with you, which, yep. hey, that's fine. You can do that. But if everyone did that, we'd never get any bigger. <laughs> I say we as your part. Like my dream, I just want to say my dream of like the ideal online left is one where we got like the video essayists like DJ Mule and Noah Sampson and everything and, and like ContraPoints and Philosophy Tube, like the video essay type content makers, like making this in-depth, well-researched, highly well-edited videos. Like they come out maybe once or twice a year, not super common, but these are just fucking masterpieces. Like like just a just a, a goddamn dinner to, to chow down on, a well-researched, well-put-together hours of time put into it type of video the kind of thing that like bread to really um uh it built its brand on for a while um but you can't just have that you every meal that you eat can't be a five star steak dinner at at a restaurant right sometimes you got to have like some microwave ramen you know otherwise you'll fucking starve to death cuz you need to eat something you know uh, by that I mean the left will literally starve to death because there's not enough content like in the algorithm to keep 
the political ideology relevant. That is literally how online content works. Um, that is basically what it is. Producing content for a machine that requires content to keep subjects relevant. The right will boost past the left in relevancy if there are not content creators that take advantage of the algorithm, along with content creators that take advantage of high, long, high, con like high work put into it, high research, high, uh, you know, quality content, right? You need a mix of strategy. That is the dream. Part of it, but the left would not get any bigger. It would stay their little echo chamber for the rest of time. Is that what you want? Are you just a psyop? Is that what is that what all this is? Are you like secretly just like a psyop? Because this does not yeah. make sense as a leftist. Wait, that's exact. That's a perfect comparison. Not every Marvel movie can be an Avengers movie. That's such a great example. Every Avengers movie has to have like a bunch of filler content, not necessarily filler content, but build up content in between. You know, like you get really hyped for an Avengers movie, but like. People still like that there's, you don't have to, you can just watch the Avengers movies, not watch the movies in between, and still more or less get what's going on. But if you're a fan of it and you, and you want to see more, you can watch the extra content. Watch things like Moon Knight, watch things like Ant-Man and, and like Iron Man, stuff like that. Watch like the, the content in between, you know? Like, like a ContraPoints video is like a new Avengers movie, you know? I feel like our con, like me, Vos, Shark Three Hundred Zero, etc. Our content is like the Disney Plus shows in between, you know. But ideally, better. <laughs> yeah, there we we do have we do have a few She Hulks though. There are a few She Hulks in here making making some cringe content on the left. But overall, overall, we're I I think I think we in the uh in the 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 live stream space have done a decent job of um generally making the best content we can. Uh, with the amount of time and effort that we can put in to produce content at such a massive quantity to take advantage of the YouTube algorithm. At all. You know what? I'm going to say it. You're a re- No, I'm just kidding. If you don't care about electoralism, then you objectively do not care about marginalized people. Great. I understand that because you're cis, white, and male, and hetero-passing, you can all admit you're hetero-passing, no matter who's in office, it does not affect you. None of it affects you. You can go living your life, white knighting for your little disc. I'm going to be honest. Every financial incentive for both me and DJ Mule and every other left-wing content creator is for the right to get more powerful. The more powerful the right gets and the more it succeeds, the more that the left is able to benefit from like one there's more content two there's more people being actively radicalized to our content like we literally benefit more personally from the world being in a worse place and yet we still advocate for the world to be made better ideally um yeah i i think i think that matters i, th I think that matters for something and consider the fact that there is a financial incentive for um like someone like DJ Mule, who isn't really affected by the right winning to just be able to, you know, sort of continue to have his little social club of the left be insular and perhaps even martyred by the right becoming more and more powerful, uh, both online and in real life politically. Cord kittens and ignore the actual material realities that people go through every day. Do you want to do you want to know what happened uh, when when people didn't really care all that much about electoralism? We got we. Uh. Oh, man. man. So we back in the mind. Stop! You violated copyright. That's amazing. And what did he do? Too much for this video. But let's focus on the three I liked beer. Supreme Court judges that he appointed. Plus the hundreds of federal court judges that he appointed. So now I like that later in this video, DJ Mule will go on to claim that. Bernie or Bust was right because abortion, like Roe v. Wade, went away anyway, despite Biden winning. With the implication that I guess things would be the same, if not better, had lefties abstained from electoralism during the 2020 election and uh, just, you know, I guess LARPed it up and uh, talked about communism instead. And just had a little hissy fit and said, Well, you didn't, you didn't make Bernie the nominee, so we're not gonna vote for Biden, Democrats. Meh. Like, no, vote blue no matter who. 
Trust me. Marginalized people need it. It like it may not seem like the difference between Biden and Trump is a big difference to you. That's probably because you're privileged as fuck, okay? The less privilege you have, the more obvious the difference between Trump and Biden gets. Now, not only do we have a bunch of Trumpers in federal court, but we have them in the highest court in the country. Maybe it's because you're a cis white male, or maybe it's because you live in the UK, an actual fucking monarchy. You don't think it matters, but it does. It matters for people who are affected by who's president. Maybe you should listen to the voices of marginalized people instead of just sitting there thinking you're right about everything from your cis white male perspective. No, I will not stop saying that. All you care about is virtue signaling about direct action, direct action. Go, go, go do some direct action then instead of sitting here making a 90 it. minute video. Why aren't you doing True. direct action? Huh? Why, why aren't you uh, uh, protesting True. the monarchy? Why aren't you uh, screaming about Roe v. Wade? Why, huh? You're just sitting there whining about someone who's 10 years your junior go do some activism if it means that much to you or do you just want a virtue signal that you do activism so you can make yourself feel better which is it in this video xander hall talks about his editor cherry bread tv who did a tweet about a bunch of online slang used by queer people specifically trans people he then goes on to say that the cancellation that they received for this was outrageous and people lost their minds over it which he then uses to catapult himself into a rant about how all lgbtqia plus people online specifically those that criticize Bosch and other debate bros are mentally ill and abuse victims and for some reason need online internet points to feel good about themselves it's extremely fucked up and just more evidence True. that whenever him and any of his debate bro friends use the term woke scold i definitely said that is person that is holding me to account guess this is my uh, big woke scold moment eh zanny boy so, huge thing to point out here, claiming that all LGBTQIA Rich. plus people are victims of abuse Thank you, is a guys. huge right-wing conservative talking point, and it's actually the basis for conversion therapy. Conversion therapists tend to point out people's abuse as a reason for them being queer. Not enough attention from daddy? Well, you became gay to get attention from other men. Not enough Christ. attention from mum? Well, you became gay to fill the feminine-shaped hole in your life. <sighs> not all queer people are victims of abuse, and not all victims of abuse are queer. It's a huge false cause fallacy. So... The thing this guy is responding to, I don't think he realizes that he's literally responding to me referencing an actual story of somebody who is trans and disabled literally using all of these things in like an id poll like method in order to defend their abusive actions with their housemates in which they were using the rent money to buy cigarettes and ATVs and hot wings and that they themselves were a victim of abuse and used that as an excuse for their behavior. And I pointed out that a lot of abusers on the left, um, even if they're in the LGBT community, will try to use past abuse as well as like things like this as a way of, of getting around their abusive behavior. Because abusers will do anything to make excuses for their actions, and that does not exclude weaponizing their identity. Who would have known? Abusers are pieces of shit. They'll weaponize their identity to make excuses for it. That was literally the only argument that I made. Obviously, DJ Mule is pretty dishonest and had to, you know, like, completely twist it. But for any who are curious, that is what the actual argument is. Show the clip, DJ. DJ. DJ, show. Show the clip. DJ. 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 We can't just believe you on everything. DJ, show the clip where he says that. Show the clip. DJ. DJ, please, I'm begging you. DJ, please, show, show, the, clip. show the clip. Show the clip. Show the clip. I guess since uh, you aren't going to do it, I'll do your job for you. Uh, he actually says this. Isn't it kind of pathetic that it's like predictable at this point, like the tides, that like a completely innocuous, harmless joke coming from a trans femme who just doesn't have any indicators of it in their bio can be absolutely fucking dogpiled to the cancellation by the online left? It happened to Philosophy Tube too. Remember like a month before Philosophy Tube came out as trans, Philosophy Tube quote tweeted uh, like a tweet by a news outlet that it said Trump was preparing for like a transition to Biden's administration, and then Philosophy Tube said, oh, I wish her luck on her transition, and she got canceled, and everyone was like, you're not trans, you can't say this, and then she came out as trans mother, and had been like secretly transitioning for like a year beforehand. Like, the LGBT community online, due to factors that are probably deserving of their own discussions, I'll probably get into on their own, are very toxic and extremely abusive. They are. And I'm not going to pretend like I know why that is. Um, all I know is that uh, just the case. My main theory is that most people in these communities are themselves the, the victims of abuse and are themselves um, subjects to discrimination and all sorts of isms and hiss that probably cause them to be in situations that are going to be less likely to be, you know, happy, fruitful lives. And that usually tends to lead to people being abusive and miserable. And I think those are the issues that we need to solve in order to, like, prevent miserable people on the internet from engaging in this type of toxicity. I think, like, I think, like a really True. good way to solve the woke school problem, quote unquote, would probably be to, like, another good point that I probably should add on as well. Um, I'm going to add this on to past Zan's argument is that the trans community online is also very, very toxic and very rabid because it, they've sort of been conditioned to be, right? Like, online especially, trans people have sort of been, you know, kind of the largest targets of abuse and ridicule as far as, like, online political engagement goes, bar none. I think we can all agree on that. And uh, I think that kind of conditioned a lot of very, you know, 
rabidly defensive behavior uh, in the uh, uh, trans community of anything determined as uh, potentially problematic, right? Are these worth any XP? They are not worth any XP. Oh boy. This is not good. Okay, well... I think there's like a specific thing you're supposed to do. <laughs> you're supposed to do to get through this, but uh, you know... This is just how it goes. Uh, I love being a warrior. Help spread awareness about LGBT people to help make it so there are less homophobic and transphobic parents out there. That's a big part of it. And now I'm starting to see it as hordes upon hordes upon hordes of young LGBT youth who probably have extremely shitty home lives, whose only solace is found on the internet. These communities on Tumblr and, and Discord and Twitter, they're lonely and miserable. That loneliness and, miser and misery has, has, you know, taking it out on people on the internet that they view to be less morally and politically pure than them. And it's resulting in them just being abusive pieces of shit and using their being gay or being left wing as a defense. And it's a big problem because, um, I don't know if you guys remember. I I'm gonna use one example here. I can list a lot more. I'm gonna use one example. I said on stream, I fucking guarantee that Izzy Bear will be outed as an abuser. About so here's the example that I just brought up. A year later, if not less, all of her roommates come out and expose her. As it turned out, she was living with a bunch of other, you know, LGBT people. She was like the head of the house, so to say, and she was taking all of their money and spending it on chicken wings, ATVs, and cigarettes instead of fixing like their AC and heating, paying the bills, and like spending the money on what it was actually supposed to be spent on, which is like, you know, keeping the place up. And then when they would like say, hey, give us our money back or pay the bills so the electricity is on, she would freak out and say, you're, you're abusing me. I'm having a P I'm my PTSD is flaring up. I'm triggered right now. You need to leave me alone. This is ableist. She'd accuse them of ableism anytime they'd confront her about the money issues. Oh. That's why he didn't show the clip because he wouldn't have been able to lie and manipulate his audience into thinking that he said all LGBTQIA plus people got it first try better than you. He said, woke scolds who harass people online are probably products of a, did he say probably? I don't even remember. He said, woke scolds who harass people online are a product of harassment themselves. I I even remember on my personal Twitter account, which I'm not going to shout out because uh, fuck you, leave me alone. Uh, True. But follow my other one. Follow my uh, follow my eco account where I post uh, uh, dank tweets like this one. Super super dank. LMAO. This is supposed to be the, the dank okay with the laughing emoji, not the white uh, supremacist okay. Do you guys remember that? How how a bunch of like white supremacists were doing like the okay sign and people were calling them out and fucking normies were like, oh, they're just doing the okay thing. Uh, that was wild. Really Where was I? Oh yeah, he didn't say all LGBTQIA plus people. He SW just said woke schools who abuse people online. If he didn't show that clip, I guess he wouldn't have been able to go on his tangent, so that way he could virtue signal, I guess, make himself feel better. I mean, if if we want to play that game, we can we can play that game. We can play games. Uh, here in this video titled uh, "There Are White Supremacists in Your Twitch Chat," he says, and I quote, "He doesn't like banning people." Who are white supremacists from his YouTube chat because he likes it when LGBTQIA plus people get bullied to suicide. Yeah, he said that. Damn. I'm just gonna show you the uh, silenced version and not actually let him speak, and you're just gonna True. have to trust me in uh, 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 transcribing what that. happened. Yeah, that was that. wild. That's crazy, right? That's that's wild, DJ. Why would you say that? You disgusting human being. You you like it when gay people uh uh off themselves. You, you like crazy. it when when gay people go for a long walk off a short bridge, huh? Hmm. Hmm. Not really an ally, are you, DJ? interesting i kind of understand why he does this yeah we're done now it's kinda, guys it's fun just lying about people. you can follow me though if you want to see me i think i should up. do it more often hmm. did you know allegedly allegedly matt walsh touched my peepee -pee when i was 10 allegedly well this is fun wait, where was i wait this video came out 11 days ago uh 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 and and we'll substantiate this more later on, but um, this is an abuser tactic. This is a manipulation tactic. To just lie about someone else, to manipulate your audience into thinking that they're a bad person just because you don't like them. Watch. It's super annoying because yes, some people are toxic online, but just log off. You don't have to see those people. This isn't a huge thing to worry about for most people, but you see the people that Santa Hall's actually talking about here are just people that disagree with him. And he can't have that. Oh no, God forbid. I, I like, we literally did the coverage of Matt Walsh being exposed like as a fucking creep when it comes to women and particularly young girls and children and uh i i just th that video like that whole like obviously it's been known that matt walsh is a fucking creep um and anybody who knows anything about the right could tell that all of his calling the left groomers and trans people groomers and stuff is projection but like as far as like the hard evidence of his weirdness um for the 16 year old clip yeah like that that stuff came out a couple days ago so this joke is very that that joke aged very well or very poorly 
That is up for you guys to decide. <laughs> uh, uh, just, just close the computer, forehead. Just log off. Just, just log off and close the computer, forehead. Uh, you don't like it? Just log, just log, just log off. Just log off, just logos, logos and pathos off the computer, dude. True. Um, um, if you, if you, um, if, if, if you don't like debate bros, uh, why don't you just log off? If, if you don't like debate bros so much, why don't you just turn off your computer instead of making a 90 minute video about it? Why, why, just log off, bro. Bro, just log off. You're gonna, you're really gonna sit here and say that people can't disagree with him while you private <laughs> your Twitter and also said this. <laughs> and you know what? While we're at it. By the way, I just feel like this is the funniest thing as well. Um, I have no idea why. I've had no contact with her, nor do I want to. But um, people sent me this, but Lonnie commented, my ex-girlfriend Lonnie, who is basically like the basis of half of the claims of me being an abusive piece of shit that DJ Mule uh, made in that video, comments on the video, and I quote, yikes, this video didn't deserve this many views, or something along those lines. Uh. Why don't why don't, why don't we why don't we uh, take a look at some of his other tweets before he was able to you know lock it? Let's let's see what he had to say. He said this one. You no, know, I'll, I'll just let them play because I am thirsty. I'll I'll, I'll inflate inflation. That's crazy. I'm gonna have to pee so much later. Comic code. Whoa. That's a lot of comic code. Can't can't people disagree with you? Can't you can't you not listen to marginalized voices who happen to disagree with you? Or do you This channel's going to be very, very big. You only listen to marginalized voices when they do agree with you. F funny how that works. Just log off. If you don't like it, if you don't like people disagreeing with you, just log off. Just go away. Just close your computer. Just touch grass. Sure. Forehead, five head, bald head, <laughs> cue ball, cue ball! Also, this tweet is my favorite. Uh, the one I put in the intro, the one where he infantilizes people of color and marginalized people and acts like they're white savior and then immediately privated his Twitter. I think that's so fucking funny. I am I am dying of laughter. It is pretty funny. Could you have any more of a white savior complex just so that way you can self-aggrandize and make yourself feel better? I, I, uh, huh? The infantilization of trans people and marginalized people that they're not able to stick up for yourself, but then you turn around and act like you're you're going to take the brunt, you're going to take the punching, and then to go into hiding. Do you want to stand up for marginalized people or don't you? Oh, but of course, conveniently, he has an excuse for that, which still infantilizes marginalized people. Okay, maybe he's trying to hide the fact that he uses slurs. Hmm? Maybe Ooh. he's trying to hide the fact that... What we got here? What do we got here? What are we? Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They, they like lefties that want to use like an edgy word that's kind of like, okay. When lefties use the word gusano as an insult, they are using it as a slur. They want to be able to use a slur or something that like they want to be able to have the feeling of using a slur to refer to somebody they hate. And but without it being a slur in their mind, they want that's why they argue that it's not. And yet they still use it as such. Not and that's putting aside the fact that it is like a a fairly, you know, th there's definitely some pretty strong arguments that it is like a. I guess you wouldn't say racially based, but like. You know, like culturally or regionally. Uh, ethnically based. Uh but still also class-based uh, pejorative. 
Though the aspect of it that has to do with like ethnicity is the part that makes it pretty sussy. But regardless of that, it is still used as a slur. And it does feel like it's used as a slur by people that want to be able to call uh, those that they dislike slurs and have that feeling of doing it without actually doing it and getting canceled or in trouble for doing it. Um, it just feels like a cowardly like uh, half measure, you know? Just go all for it, you know? Get yourself canceled. Be a full-on bigot. What are you afraid of? He likes tweets with slurs. Hmm. You're a bit of a you're a bit of a slur boy, aren't you? But but it's Ooh. okay when you use a slur against people you don't like. It's fine. It's fine. You you can you can say the n-word if it's uh, against someone you don't like. I know those aren't the same, but you know what? It's funny to you to think of DJ using the n-word against someone that he doesn't like. I think that's really fucking funny, actually. Like oh my god, oh my god! Imagine if he calls me a beaner. Oh. I hope he I hope he calls me a beaner. I hope he Twitch. likes a tweet Twitch. that calls me one. Twitch. Maybe, may, ooh, maybe I'll get the wet back. God, I hope so. Twitch. But you claim that other people aren't able to take criticism. Twitch. Even though when you were being criticized by a marginalized person, you said just to mute them because they didn't agree with you. So their voice doesn't matter, apparently. Kind of hypocritical, but okay. Go off, King. Go go, go off, uh, 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 Eggman Supreme. Well, I'm going to be honest, I'm really trying to not be that mean. Um, because I know if I am, he's going to go, Oh, he, he, he called me a, he called me a mean name and it hurt my little feelings. Um, I am very sensitive and, it, and when he, when he said that I look like, uh, Dr. Eggman, that hurt my feelings, so I'm not even gonna listen. I, mean, I, part of why I thought it had to be a meme was how much like Dr. Eggman he looked. Like... I, I feel like it was literally actively, like, an attempt to feed the, the Sonic memers in my community, even. You know, like, he actively made himself look like the second best option to cast as Eggman behind Jim Carrey. And it's like... I don't know. Amazing. I've been live for eight and a half hours. That is extraordinary. I like he was gonna watch this video to begin with, but whatever. But if I thought that people doing that was a problem, I'd be doing a video about them and not debate bros. It's good that people are exploring the boundaries of our language and how the roots of certain words can be harming people and how certain attitudes and behaviors need to be changed. It shows that our culture is evolving into one that's based on love and compassion rather than hateful exclusion. And it can also show that we have a long way to go when it comes to people resorting to puritanical, Protestant, colonialist rhetoric when trying to change people's minds about things. But that's all by the by. There's one thing that's extra telling in this video. He says that woke schools need to be de-radicalized in the same way that Nazis do. If you know somebody who uh, it tends to, you know, listen, all right, you know how I like to tell you guys that if you think somebody that you know, like a friend or family member, might be, be might be being radicalized by the right, you know, they're white, they're straight, they're a gamer bro, they like edgy humor, they feel politically disenfranchised, do you think this person might be target political radicalization by the right? In the same way, I recommend that if you know anybody in your life that's like young, impressionable, LGBT, and doesn't really have a good home life and finds that most of their only support, both emotionally and possibly even financially, is with people on the internet, keep an eye on those friends. <laughs> Wrong. So if you're a Zan fan and you've made it this far in the video, that quote literally follows me saying keep an eye on those friends and make sure they don't get taken advantage of by people that try to offer them a way out of their shitty situation and then lock them into shitty living situations <laughs> that's literally me warning people against getting into an izzy bear uh roommate scenario <laughs> because that's extremely extremely calm well not maybe extremely calm that's maybe an over over speak but like that is a thing that happens um, like people in L like in L like LGBT people in bad living situations will be offered a way out, and uh, it'll be by shitty people that'll take advantage of them. Well, I gotta say kudos because most debate bro fans don't really watch the video and simply react to things out of context and then ah, claim that I'm doing the same thing. Despite the hours and hours and hours of content that I've watched from your special boy. And some of you are sat there saying, well, no, Xander Holt is not a lib, he's not a centrist. What do you mean? He's progressive, he's a leftist. All right, all right, all right, all right, calm down. We're gonna get into it. Just grab a nice drink, some snackies, maybe play your favorite video game while you're watching this video, and we're gonna get into it. Do you know That's what these what words I'm mean? I'm doing. Do you know, do you understand the words that are coming out of your mouth right now? Because I don't think that you do. I could get it. You learned a bunch of words from your cutesy little Discord server where you and all of your little powwows can LARP as leftists and you just say, oh, state power, um, um, da down with the, down with capitalism, um, uh, uh, what are other lefty words? Um, um, uh, Marx, 
state violence. P uh, po police, police bad. Call, call the, call the fire department, cause, cause police are on fire, cause they bad. Sounds like you just want to use lefty words to fit your lefty aesthetic, cause that's all you care about. It's coming across as a leftist without actually understanding what it means to be one. That's funny. Hmm. That 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 sounds kind of ableist. Are, are you making fun of people with attention deficit disorders? Are you are you making fun of people who have ADHD? Whoa. Oh oh, what you can't sit here and watch my video? Ableist uh, DJ uh, without Mule. Your, without your little snacky, without your without your little without your, with your video game. Kind of weird that you're again infantilizing people and just being a little ableist against people with uh, attention deficit disorders. That's kind of weird, dude. But okay, sure. At this point, I'm starting to kind of think it's a fetish. Gross. So let's go right back to his first video that got a ton of views, how I almost became alt-right. He starts off by saying he never really went into politics and had a fairly progressive mom who taught him why it's wrong to be racist, misogynist, and bigoted in general, and that he was super disappointed in the USA and Americans in general when Trump got elected because even he could see that Trump was a bad guy. He then talks about his radicalization through YouTube content. It's so weird listening to this because it's almost like he's talking about himself when he talks about Chris Reagan, who he describes introduced him to alt-right content. He says nice. that Chris described himself as center-left and did a lot of content about how feminism was obsolete in the USA in 2016. Obviously, Xanderhal doesn't do content like that, but he does do content that attacks people that are too left-wing for him or annoy him personally. A lot of similar you know the video is very short so i'd encourage you to watch it yourself <clears throat> did you know that chris ray gun did videos in which he responded to people that annoyed him uh personally and politically guess what that's also what zan does interesting have you considered that have you considered that you need to go more in depth about chris sometime um, like his older videos? I don't know, maybe I'll have him on stream for an interview, that could be interesting. But the long and short of it is that he went further down the pipeline and saw Charlottesville and the murder of Heather Heyer, and then he saw that that shit was actually really bad and wrong, so he started to lose faith in it. He then talks about how Destiny pulled him out lose of the alt-right pipeline. For those of you that are somehow blissfully unaware of Density, here is a quick recap. He started making content on Twitch when it was still Justin.tv, he did like StarCraft 2 matches, and he started doing debate content around 2016. Destiny apparently referred to himself as a libertarian before this, but then called himself a liberal when he heard another streamer call another streamer the F word. Anyway, in Destiny's debate content, he did a lot of arguing against white supremacists and- I like how he- wh Destiny started calling himself a liberal when he heard a gamer call- or a streamer call another streamer the F word. I- I somehow doubt that is how that happened. I- I would really love to hear Destiny's response to that point. Does anybody have a clip of Destiny responding to that? I would love to hear his response. I can only imagine he responded like, what? What the fuck? What, what, what do you, like, what? I, I can only imagine him being confused. Like, what? There's no way that's true, that Destiny just, like, heard someone in a game refer to another person that, by the F word and was like, man, homophobia is real. No shit. I need to become a debate bro. And from that day on, when Destiny began making... Uh, Starcraft de debate content, I don't know. Alt-right figureheads. But now, here's the key thing what about this. What world does this man live this in? from the sense of ground. Destiny has also admitted to using slurs in private and has defended this, in fact, in multiple debates. He's never been oh, a yeah. communist or a socialist or an anarchist and has, in fact, argued against those ideologies from a capitalist viewpoint for a long, long time. In fact, Destiny is quoted as saying this about the George Floyd uprisings. The rioting needs to fucking stop. And if that means, like, white redneck fucking militia dudes out there mowing down dipshit protesters that think that they can torch buildings at 10 p.m., then at this point, they have my fucking blessing. Because holy shit, this fucking shit needs to stop. It needed to stop a long time ago. So yeah, oh, no. this is the guy that saved Zandahal. I find it very funny how he says pulled from the alt-right in 2017, but then has to jump to 2020 just to get the worst clip possible. Because again... Well, yeah, of course. I mean, like, I, I don't even feel like that's even worth pointing out. I mean, like, it's very... any. I, I feel like most people in the political space that are, like, honest know that Destiny, like, played a huge part in, like, shattering a lot of the political conceptions online at that time by debating some of the largest demagogues in the right-wing space. He wants to manipulate you. Oh, I said that weird. He wants to manipulate you into thinking that stuff like that is what pulled him from the alt-right. Which by that time, by the time of that clip, he was already on the left. So... And and don't get me wrong. I, I don't like Destiny. I'm not the biggest fan. Uh, 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 liberal bad or whatever. Um, but I think it's very convenient that you use that clip and not... I don't know, his JonTron debate. His or like, yeah, like any of the clips that I reference in my video or any of the videos from Destiny that I reference in my video, the JonTron debate or any of his other like crazy right-wing debates. His debate against Lauren, no, no, his debate against 
I don't know. I don't watch Destiny. I just know him for the JonTron thing. Also, I love how you you just have to call it the George Floyd uprising. Uh, they were protests. Yeah, Every single person on the planet who isn't trying to LARP calls them protests. In a follow-up to this video and the much longer how I fell down the alt-right pipeline in a state, he immediately starts by saying, I also wasn't even a leftist when I made those videos. I was still identifying as what I now know to be a neoliberal. And then claims to become for a while, I had a stint where I was like, you know what, I agree with socialism and leftism and everything, I'll call myself a leftist. But then I realized that also entails, like, if you're going to do that, at least in my opinion, you have to be equipped to argue very competently how that political system you advocate for is superior to the one that we currently exist in. So I've fallen more into... When people ask me, where do you stand politically? Um, I typically just call myself an intersectional like progressive um, or sometimes intersectional leftist, I guess, like broadly, but generally like progressive or intersectional progressive because I think it is a lot more pragmatic um, to argue like pretty standard like current political issues generally. I think it's usually where most discussion is going to be had that's most productive. There's always like the cool theory discussions we can have, but if we're really talking about relevant political discussions, I, I don't think that going on debates and, and arguing about like socialism versus capitalism is going to have the results that personally I value. Um, I do like arguing against the ghoulish um, like capitalist propaganda, um, the stuff like uh, uh, the anti-work stuff, the uh, the way that like all of the me liberal media outlets were covering the anti-work stuff, that's an instance where you're going to see me come out like pretty, you know, sounding pretty socialist. Because I do agree with a lot of the ethics of it, but I think that if you're going to call yourself a socialist, you better be damn sure ready to explain in great detail and in very, very nuanced detail um, a lot of the, the intricacies of how a socialist America, for example, uh, would function and work better than a capitalist America. And I know that triggers some of you guys, but you know that's just my opinion. Okay, when I go out there defending an argument or defending a position or defending an ideology, I don't want to do it based on like some ideologue-based like motivation. I'm doing it because I feel confident in the ideas. You know. You don't see me out there defending trans people because it's what you're supposed to do or whatever. I mean, yeah, I, I, I know it's the right thing to do, but at the same time, I'm out there doing it because I, I think I'm pretty damn good at arguing against transphobic arguments. I'm pretty damn informed about it, I think. And I think I'm very equipped to argue against these ideas and I'm very confident in it. But yeah, there was a while where I was like, you know what, I agree with these ideas, so I'll call myself a, a leftist, but I don't really agree with that as much anymore. I think it's not really useful on more progressive but only really says that he's a leftist and doesn't really go on what much from there he does say that apparently he was planning to read the conquest of bread live on stream but i can't find that on his channel anywhere so it's likely that he read a bit of it thought it that did happen by the way um i actually have done multiple theory streams uh at this point so we did an audiobook listening to of the conquest of bread while i was streaming terraria and then we did an entire audiobook reading of um where we listened and obviously like paused it and analyzed it and broke it down like it wasn't just us sitting there listening to it like i'd pause it every paragraph or so and like comment on things and like you know re reword things and like make sure that we like clarified and stuff we did the um, conquest of bread while playing terraria this is obviously a while ago we're talking like 2019 2020 um and then uh after that we ended up doing uh while i was in california later on we listened to the Communist Manifesto, narrated by, uh, of all people, Sargon of Akkad, while doing hardcore Minecraft. And obviously did the, the same thing. So I have, well, I didn't read it on stream because God help me, I don't think I would have been able to do that. Um, but like, we still literally like internalized it and like analyzed it and like consumed it. Like, yeah. I, I don't know if it's still up on my channel because YouTube and me having to like, private fods after they're up for a long time because i worried about youtube like striking old content or copywriting old content that has music in it because i played a lot of copyrighted music in my old streams uh but like it's still up there probably somewhere on the internet
it was going to be too boring and sack the idea off which is Probably actually fair enough archive. because i think that reading theory on a live stream is extremely boring content and i definitely would not be down for that but it does kind of show that he's not really interested in that stuff and the vast majority of his other content clearly shows a lack of understanding about how the working class struggle intersects with the civil rights that he supports what's also interesting to point i'm pretty sure youtube can still get you if you like private or take down videos uh for copyright and stuff but it's still probably better than nothing right now is that while Xanahol says that Destiny saved him from the alt-right pipeline, Xanahol doesn't appear to have actually me. ever been debated on his alt-right views. He simply saw an example of right-wing views being torn to shreds in the form of Destiny debating a white supremacist. The major difference between this and other forms of de-radicalization is that it simply made him not an- Oh, he's arguing that I- he's trying to straw man, uh, oh, okay. So he's straw manning and trying to say that I and Vosh and everybody else, that we think that, like, we're actually convincing the people we're debating. Um, that is- that is very rarely the case. It is all about convincing the audience a Nazi. You're gonna make him a communist, an anarchist, or even a socialist. The more and more that Zanhol gushes about destiny, it becomes clearer and clearer that he has a deep love for the guy, and that he wants to emulate him in every way. He says that the edge This video is from, for one, that is a very, very weird read. And also this video is from 2019? of Destiny made him think he was cool, and he made a lot of friends in Destiny's Discord server. Now, the next part is extremely interesting. He talks about our schoolboy Sean's video, The Fate of the Frogmen, a video in which Sean talks about the online alt-right and their slow, sad march into irrelevance. And Zan the Man says that this was the moment that he truly understood what had happened to him, basically admitting that Sean, a video essayist, made him really understand what had happened to him versus watching the debate with Destiny, which simply made him stop being a full-on Sikh Heiling Nazi. It's interesting that he talks about learning Sikh social Heiling structures and Nazi. disavowing capitalism, but a lot of his content just really isn't about that. One of the most important things to happen over the last year for a lot of leftists is the wave of unionization that's happened across the US and the world. If Zan was covering a lot of this, that'd be it's so bizarre how much his own lies contradict himself in the video, you know? How, like, he'll try to characterize something that I said before. He's like, he says that he never really went all the way down the, 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 the alt-right. And then later on in the video, he's like, it just made him no longer a Sieg Heiling Nazi. It's like, bro, your lies and misrepresentations in my video that you refuse to show the actual clips of to show what I actually said, you really want to reduct, like, everything that I said down to some, like, embarrassing simple statement of oh destiny made him not a nazi he wants to idolize destiny or oh uh actually it was a a, a video essayist youtuber that made him not a nazi oh he was never a nazi oh like well, it's like he he like changes his misrepresentation of what i say in my video to fit every new argument and none of them work together <laughs> like none of these arguments can coexist none of these lies can be simultaneously true I mean a lot of people learning about a lot of good stuff. He's got one video that's 18 minutes of him covering the Staten Island warehouse unionization, but it's got woefully low views. Hell, I know the feels on that one. My union video and activism content performs terribly. See, this is this is what I'm talking about. Hey, uh, uh, I understand why you wouldn't read the Conquest of Bread on stream. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't watch it either. But I'm still gonna lampoon you for not doing it. I mean, I, I would never do it, but it, it's okay when I wouldn't do it. But if you don't do it, you're a piece of shit. You're, you're a terrible person. True. Please, DJ, have uh, proofread your scripts. I'm begging you. Have, have someone take a second look at it. Because, dear God, if it really beefed you that much, then why don't you do it? Unless you're not a real leftist. Why don't you read all of Capital? Capital? Why don't you read all of Capital? Just read it on stream. If it means that much to you, if you're willing to lampoon other people about it, just why don't you do it? I don't... I don't know how many times I can say this. But show the goddamn clip. Talk about how he doesn't understand working class struggles. Instead of just saying he doesn't. DJ doesn't understand what it's like to be a leftist. See how easy that is. But if you did show clips, you wouldn't be able to gaslight your audience now, would you? Earlier, you said that debate was bad. So bad, in fact, that you had to pull out a fake Lenin quote. But since Zan said that he was pulled from the alt-right by a debate, but because that debate didn't fully make him a communist, that's why debate bad. Huh? Again, if your entire political beliefs are swayed from one extreme to the other by one debate, you didn't really have those beliefs to begin with. You just used it as some aesthetic flourish, like DJ does. And that's it. So, which is it? Is, is just debate bad, or is debate bad when you don't go from Nazi to commie? Make it make sense, please. I'm begging, please make it make sense. I know this there, guy. There is really no way to make it make sense. And doesn't really care to begin with. But a fascist is not gonna watch a Sean video. A fascist is not going to watch a Big Joel video. What they're going to watch is a debate 
where they think that their 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 big boy streamer or th their big boy right rightoid streamer is going to crush the lefty, um, and then they get epically owned with facts and logic, and then they start questioning. They go, oh, maybe uh, maybe maybe he isn't maybe he isn't as smart as I thought. Maybe a lot of the best points in Destiny's debate with Jontron were honestly just when he asked Jontron more questions, which was most of the debate. Really, most of the debate was just Destiny asking clarifying questions like, OK, Jontron, if you believe in this, then, um, OK, so you want there to be a, a more white America. OK, how do we achieve that? How do we achieve that nonviolently? Oh, well, I mean, we would just tell them to go. What if they don't want to go? This is the country. They were born here. They were raised here. Like, what What do you do? And he's like, uh, and he eventually eventually had to like Jontron had to admit the only way to achieve his his white, white ethno state, white majority America or whatever is to use, you know, pretty violent, you know, anti-immigration, uh, possibly police and military tactics, right? Um, and it would have to use violence, and it would be fascistic uh, behavior. And um, obviously, like, just most of it was just Destiny asking Jontron what he believed and what those beliefs led to, and uh, it's all it really took. It's all it really took. And, and a lot of it was also that, um, like, say what you want, especially back then, uh, Destiny was like, way more well informed than the average like content creator making political content so he would just reference events and stories that i had never heard of especially because right-wing content creators that i watched at the time weren't covering that stuff and so it started making me realize i was i was receiving news through a very uh, narrow lens and i started doing my own research i started following like news uh, uh, websites and like actually getting updates on my computer whenever new shit was happening and like reading like thing like instead of watching right wing YouTuber number four hundred and thirty three talk about social fucking issue that they decided is the thing they have to start a culture war over this week, I started reading about actual world events and world news. Who would have known? Um, a lot of it really is just finding content that breaks you out of the echo chamber. The the right wing propaganda is very much most effective on people with a very childish view of politics in the world. And a lot of this stuff just kind of gives a reality check to that childish view. No, these dumbass LARPers on the internet who are calling themselves like big brain skeptics are not in fact intellectuals who have it all figured out and discovered the real, actual, true, correct political positions that uh, the media is hiding from you. And that the you know the the elite wants to keep you from realizing like that's not what's happening. Uh, these people are just grifting off of you to make as much money as possible, and most of it is just hatred clicks. Like that that is a pretty damn compelling realization that sets in when you watch those debates. Um, that that you really can only see become evident. Maybe not only, but really becomes most evident in my opinion when you see the person get called out in real time. For not knowing what the fuck they're talking about and being a lying grifting piece of shit seeing that happen face to face in person in real time i think is very valuable maybe he isn't all that all that bright and and then they and then they start moving over P people just don't wake up one day and go from nazi to commie maybe you did because you just use politics like a t-shirt like a, like a sports jersey but some of us actually believe and hold value to the political ideologies that we hold you should try it sometime it's fun but again, I, re I really don't think that he cares about bringing people over to the left because at the end of the day, he uses leftism just to get laid. That's all he cares about. White knighting for his little kittens and being able to get laid. Potentially. That's weird, right? This guy's kind of weird. He, he, he says, well, he only has one video on his channel about unions that's shorter in length and has less views. That's funny. Very hypocritical, DJ. Why are you bringing this up? How many videos do I have about unions on my channel? Like, probably around six, you know? At least, at least a few, you know? I definitely have at least two that I've done in recent memory. As some sort of gotcha, when you literally only have one video, like in the last month, about unions on your channel, months. and it's shorter, with less views, the videos on your channel are powwows with your friends. Make more videos about unions. Why are, you, why are you relying on other people to do it? Why don't you just do it yourself? Or do you not care? And you're just trying to use this as some sort of gotcha, even though it's fucking stupid.
as if the view count is the fault purely of the creator and not the YouTube algorithm. How do you not understand how this works? You're either incredibly stupid or willingly lying to your audience. Again, for the hundredth time, it is bad when person I don't like do thing, but when I do thing, that's a-okay. Well, let's talk about his Joe Biden support. It's so interesting that in this video, quote, why I'm not Bernie or bust and you shouldn't be is either. Joe Biden talks support. about how he loves Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden is a creepy old man who has rape allegations against him. But more recently, he just unironically tweets and retweets Joe Biden's Twitter or pro-Democrat. Didn't that end up not being very, uh... Didn't those allegations end up not being very, um... Uh, uh... Like, well backed up? Wasn't there, like, a shit ton of contradictions and, uh... Like, things that ended up being lies in her story. I may be wrong about this, but I remember there being this point where, like, something came out that was like, oh, shit. Uh, and, like, nobody brought that that up anymore. Like, everybody stopped talking about it when that, when that information came out. I forget what it was, though. If anybody in chat remembers, let me know. Right, stop. Zan in this video also talked about Ruth Bader Ginsburg and how if she dies while Trump is in office, then women's rights, trans rights, and other civil rights are all on the chopping block. Funny then how all that still kind of happened, but he still supports Joe Biden and the Democrats. He focuses in this video a lot about harm reduction, but the harm has been done. It happened under Joe Biden and the Democrats. And Xander Hall used this platform to tell people the that Bernie is done. a bad thing. Okay, I get it. Not voting for a Democrat in 2020 would have been a disaster. But you didn't need to go full pro-Democrat either. Nuance is a what? thing and critical support is a thing. The main thing to take away from Xander Hall in this video support. is this. Revolution isn't happening in the foreseeable future. All we can do at this current moment is work with yes. our current electoral system. True. Anybody who's still burning your bus at this point, there's no change in their- I like how he cut me out there. Work with the, our electoral system while also engaging in direct action where we can. <laughs> like, or on the ground action where we can, I think I said. It's been a long time. I like how he cuts me off as I'm saying wow. <laughs> like, I'm saying wow to mention on the ground direct action, and he cuts me off. That's funny. Remember, guys, no honesty. We can show you can show your enemies no honesty. Uh, what the what the fuck? How am I supposed to use this? Imbues the sacred Jakari offering with the vengeful spirits. The ancient Jakari. But, but, but where? But wait, does this do it? Hmm. Ah. This quest is a fuck. Okay, maybe underground their minds fuck them okay they don't give a shit about minorities or anybody uh in this country um uh whose life is on the line in this election this is True. such a reductive take and again has been proven wrong by the fact that said minorities have suffered under biden as we previously discussed this is what i mean when i say that he he has no clue how politics works rgb or rbg whatever died rgb <laughs> i'm going under to trump so trump was able to nominate his third Supreme third. Court Justice. And it was those three Supreme Court Justices, just I, if you will, that was able to overturn Roe v. Wade. But suddenly, suddenly, because uh, because it happened under Biden, that means it's Biden's fault. You are literally just as bad as the MAGA crowd blaming Biden for gas prices. Oh, th this thing happened under Biden? Uh, that means it's his fault. That means Biden pressed the, the, the high gas button. That means Biden, Biden hit the no Roe v. Wade button because it's all his fault, apparently. Please learn how politics works before you open your mouth and let the shit fall right out of it. I am begging you, please. But he fails to mention because... um. He, uh, liberal bad, Democrat bad, apparently, and that's all he cares about is not being called a liberal, uh, because that's not the sports team that he's rooting for. Um, he failed to state that Biden True. signed an executive order stating that I don't remember, so I'm going to actually read it from the website. Um, however, the continued advancements of restrictive abortion laws in the states across the country have created legal uncertainty and desperate access. Does that say desperate? and desperate access to reproductive health care services depending on where the person lives, putting patients, providers, and third parties at risk in fueling confusion for hospitals and health care providers, including pharmacies. There have been numerous reports of women denied health and life-saving emergency care as providers fearful of legal reprisal delay necessary treatment for patients until their conditions worsen to dangerous levels. So it's almost like it's Republicans' fault for making it more complicated than it needs to be. So maybe it wouldn't have been a good idea to give them free reign of the federal government. Mm -hmm. Huh. Who would have thunk? Think of all the think of all the bad things that Trump did. I'll give you four hours. Um, now think of all the stuff that he could have done in a second term. Yeah, um, I'm good. No 
My favorite thing is that all the clips that DJ Mule does include in the video are all clips that made everybody who responded to the video go true and based. Like, they're all things that made the people responding to the video uh, from DJ Mule think that I was correct and based in my assessment. Not to toot my own horn or anything, but, you know, I'm just saying. Am I gonna die here? No thank you. Or Orange Cool Man bad. But again, he doesn't give a shit, because he's a cis white male, and so literally none of this affects him. Roe v. Wade does not affect him, so why should he care? He doesn't. He just wants to virtue signal that liberal bad. I am so far left that liberal bad, and that's all I care about, and I'm gonna virtue yep. signal until my voice goes. Virtue signal! Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. M maybe. DJ you should Mills listen voice to marginalized is, voices, is and what it would have been like under a second term of Trump. Maybe you should listen to marginalized voices, and see what it was like under Trump. Um, but again, you don't care. All you care about is your cis white male perspective and your fun little hug box of content creators. So I don't know why I'm even telling you this. And also, I love how I love how he then immediately goes to, oh, yes, I agree. But when you say it slash do it, I'm going to attack you for it because I don't have any real morals. And this is all just an aesthetic flourish for me because none of this actually matters to me. Absolutely disgusting. <clears throat> um. I just went to go pee in the sink, and why did no one tell me that, that my hair time. looked like that? I thought we were friends, and you just let me film an hour and a half when my hair looks flat? Well, I thought we were friends. I like Jerk. my hair I guess, flat. I guess not being a fucking moron is liberal now. I guess that's, that's all it takes. If you want a revolution so bad, I double, no, I triple dog dare you to go start one tomorrow. See how far you get. I love Your that queen just died. Go. Now's the perfect time. Come on. Since you care so much. Saving up completed quests to turn in all at once is quite literally edging for discipline and wow. Just do it. With your, with your 5,000 fans. Six, you know, I'll be nice. You're, you're close to six. With your 6,000 fans. Just go start a revolution tomorrow. See how far that gets you. I'll be laughing from my bedroom. Are you gonna are you gonna substantiate those claims, or are you just gonna say that minorities have it just as bad under Biden? Um, because li li libtard bad, liberal bad. Even though they had it worse under Trump. But okay, go off, go off, King. None of this affects you anyway. Go off, big big smart man. Go off. You make fun of harm reduction because you don't give a shit about minorities. You and make fun of harm, harm reduction yeah. because again, for the hundredth time, again. None of this affects you personally. So to you, it's all the same. But for people who actually are affected by the policies enacted by the president, yeah, I, I think they would have preferred Biden over Trump. But, you know, you have to LARP as your, as your, what was it on your Twitter? Fucking anarcho-communist? Fucking just pick one. Fucking pick one. I'm an anarchist. But I'm not a fucking idiot. And I understand that electoralism is kind of our only option right now. Because I guarantee you... Did you not see Jan 6? If they did that to the Jan 6 rioters, what do you think they would do to lefties? We wouldn't even make it onto the front lawn. They would use yep. they would use their their fucking White House death ray, uh, heat ray, and fucking microwave my synapses the second I even thought about it. Um, pop our uh, brains. Uh, hey, uh, uh, leftist, uh, uh, LARPing leftist Kermit the Frog here. Um, uh, uh, voting for a Democrat would have definitely uh, been better than voting for a Republican. That did, that went from Kermit to something else I don't even know. But uh, voting for a Democrat would have been... Oh, now I'm Jordan Peterson. Oh, even better. Uh, voting for a Democrat would have been the same as uh, voting for a Republican. Uh, I am a leftist. I am very smart. LARP, LARP, LARP. LARP, 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 LARP. I am. I am so smart. LARP, LARP. Fucking idiot. Moron. Jesus Christ. It's actually a good can impression. You, can you give an actual argument instead of just saying that you don't care about minorities? Because oh, as a minority, dragons. I don't feel very cared for. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be real. I'm going to be one honey with you. I do not feel very loved right now. So the question here is this. If Santa Hall loves Bernie so much, why is he so willing to claim that the majority of people who support Bernie don't care about marginalized people's rights? So my theory is this. As we said before, when Xander Hall said he lost a lot of faith in America after Trump was elected, he sees that as the catalyst for him going down the pipeline. So for him, beating Trump is paramount in that election because he sees his radicalization as Trump's fault. Which is true, as far as we can tell, Steve Bannon, who I've talked about on the channel before, was a big wig on Trump's campaign and literally wanted to radicalize gamers to the far right. However, what seems to be more important to Zan than the nuance that... Did you guys know that uh, Steve Bannon literally ran a Chinese World of Warcraft illegal gold selling ring overseas. I'm not kidding.
That was actually one of his investments. That'd be a lot of money in World of Warcraft gold. Lot of money. Lot of money in this here World of Warcraft wallet. Bernie or Busters have a point, or that even Bernie or Busters do care about marginalized people, is that Trump gets beat in the election. To Xander Hall, this is a cathartic thing that he needs, and to be fair, it actually was for a lot of Americans and people around the world. Especially people in a similar Needs. position to Xanderhal who got radicalized by alt-right beliefs and then realized that they've been taken for a ride. It's kind of like revenge for them, if you will. See now, what happens with revenge is that you become a bit blinkered and you lose sight of the bigger picture. Neoliberals are actually primed for this kind of worldview. You know, it's the I'm all right Jack mentality. Xanderhal then goes on to talk about all the bad things that are going to happen if Trump gets re-elected. And <clears throat> such as... The US will slip further into fascism. Roe v. Wade will get overturned. The attacks on LGBTQIA plus people will increase and continue. He also focuses on COVID-19, saying that it will continue to ravage the US unchecked. Let's uh, take a look at what happened under Biden. Um, the US has slipped further into fascism. Roe v. Wade has been overturned. Attacks on LGBTQA plus people have increased and continued. COVID-19 is still ravaging the US unchecked. I like how he says that COVID-19 is ravaging the US unchecked, which is objectively untrue. So for starters, if you think that having Donald Trump as president would not make literally every single uh, one of these states, do you, do you think DeSantis and all the other, and Abbott and all these other ghoulish fucking Republicans passing these anti-LGBT bills in Republican states, how bad do you think it would be if Trump was president? If Trump was, was at the top of all of it and in power? Can you fucking imagine? Not to mention, COVID is absolutely not ravaging the U.S. unchecked. Compare... Tr COVID was killing a 9-11's worth of Americans a day at one point, wasn't it, during Trump's presidency? Like, how, what, are the, what are the numbers at now for COVID? Have we had any recent variants? Uh, U.S. COVID infections slash deaths. We're at a 41,000 uh, per day new case average. Or this is world worldwide, sorry. Or no, United States. 41,855 uh, cases per day daily average, 345 deaths per day daily average, that's way fucking lower, 3,300 hospitalizations across the U.S. daily average, and vaccinations are at 35.4% for people aged over five. So we're still not fully vaccinated and boosted, certainly not fully boosted. Hasn't Biden literally rolled out incentives to uh, get people vaccinated? Wasn't there like literally a... Correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't there like a, a some sort of like stipend or something that you got if you got vaccinated or something because of Biden? Maybe that was just a California thing. No, 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 that was a California thing. That Yeah, there was. That might have just been a California thing. A lot of blue states implemented uh, incentives, either payments or like, yeah, stuff like that to encourage people to get uh, vaccinated. Yeah, there was. Okay, people are saying there was. Um, yeah, so obviously, blue st that's obviously been a very much a Democrat thing to do, making incentives for people to get vaccinated. Uh, obviously, DJ Mule does not acknowledge these things because he is not affected by COVID. Um, I have no doubt that he is able to sit in his fucking room all day uh, making content and not affected by COVID, which is what I do, by the way. I sit in my room all day and avoid COVID and not get infected. I have yet to get COVID. However, uh, I don't pretend like I'm out there, like, marching on the street every day doing direct action when, in fact, I am just a fucking streamer, okay? <laughs> like, I'm just a YouTube content creator. I'm not out there on the street, at least not yet. Uh, we'll see. Maybe... Maybe we get more into that direct action stuff as COVID winds down, because I really have... I, I take a lot of pride in not having gotten COVID yet. I don't know if this Ideally, is Ideally, like I will never. ...some sort of projection. At the very least, it's some fucking weird-ass armchair psychology. But maybe... Just, just maybe... It's just a good thing if Orange Koo Man didn't win. Maybe it's just as simple as Orange Man bad. Ever think of that one? Orange I know, Man crazy, is right? Actually crazy. Bad. What a thought. Maybe it's just Orange Man bad instead of this weird mental gymnastic armchair psychology. And who even, who even gives a shit? What, what? I just thought, even if it was some weird fucking Freudian shit, who gives a shit? Who cares? Orange Man's still bad. It's still good to vote him out. What, 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 what? Well, because the point of the video wasn't actually to like offer some sort of constructive criticism towards me. Um, most of my critics specifically try to target my, they target my credibility, but much like I, they, they like to credit my, or they like to discredit my maturity is another side of it. 
I did a whole video about the ageism thing, and I actually have a whole other segment I'm gonna do in a, a pretty soon about a 17 year old Minecraft YouTuber who makes completely harmless kids content that's just a little obnoxious, who ended up getting inundated with death threats, harassment, and doxxed after like every single commentary YouTuber, Leafy Wannabe, decided to make con like videos on her, like shitting on her and saying she's the worst content creator on YouTube because she makes annoying Minecraft kids content. And literally that's it. Um, like it's really shitty stuff. Like ageism is actually fucking real. All right. Like particularly towards younger people online, they will try to target like this idea that like I, they, they like to push this idea that I'm like some kid that doesn't know what he's doing. And a lot of it tends to be based around my age as I did start doing this when I was like 18 years old. Um, like I, I just turned 18 years old um and and like yeah i i guess that's part of it but at the same time it's like i'm 23 now i turned 23 a few months ago it feels like i i don't know it feels like it's it's been a bit much you know jelly bean yeah jelly bean's the name of the channel yeah like that like the the harassment attacks on on that jelly bean channel absolutely shining example of both like misogynistic harassment and ageist harassment online like that that girl literally did nothing other than be a 17 year old girl making like a kid making content for kids and there's nothing wrong with the content nothing predatory nothing exploitative nothing bad it's just a little cringy if you know you're a grown fucking man watching it because you're not the target demographic of the 17 year old girl's Minecraft content for children. Like, I watched Critical react to the Sunny V2 video on that um, on that entire thing, and I was actually mad. I got upset the further into the video that I watched. Like I, I was genuinely upset. It's it like the internet knows no bounds to its cruelty, even towards young people. Like yeah, they doxed her as well. Yeah, Jelly Bean came out as on binary. Oh okay. Even more based, so they them pronouns. I mean, they they might still go by she and they, but we'll we'll just go with they them. It's usually pretty safe. That's what's so great about they them pronouns. You can use them for literally anybody. They're always apply. What? You don't even live in America. Of course, it doesn't fucking matter. To you. Oh yeah, that is. Of true. course, that it's. Wait, I forgot to even mention that. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting that there are countries that don't exist. I I, I keep forgetting that these the, we acknowledge these fantasy nations such as Ritbonger land is existing. Um, yeah, like... I love this white, presumably cishet, I don't know, uh, like, British guy talking about how minorities in America actually would not uh, have it any worse under Trump, and he is actually the arbiter of whether or not this is true. Absolutely peak uh, white savior behavior. Of course they're the same to you. You don't even live here. Earlier he said that Biden winning was a good thing. But now it's a bad thing. Do you have any consistency at all? Like at all? Or do you just like say whatever pushes your narrative? What, do you just say whatever to manipulate your audience? It's kind of weird, isn't it? So here's a list of reasons why this guy is a fucking moron. First of all, one. the Republican Party has switched further into fascism, not the United States, so probably a good thing they didn't get the Oval Office. Funny how that works. Second of all, Roe v. Wade was overturned because of the Supreme Court decision because Trump appointed three judges. Hmm, interesting. Who's carrying out these LGBTQIA attacks, by the way? Is it Democrats or is it Republicans? Oh, Republicans. Huh, interesting. Good thing we didn't give them the federal government, even though every single Republican platform is overturning gay marriage, but okay, yeah, sure, it's the same. Buddy, buddy, COVID... COVID is a worldwide thing. It's not just America. I, I hate to I hate to do the to do the look at your own country thing, but it, buddy, using 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 COVID as a jab at America is like it's like blaming Venezuela for Brexit. Does that make sense? No. Is that the point? Yes. Plus, I would much rather have Joe wear a mask alone outside Biden over uh, Donald masky, hurdy facey, no breathy Trump. Yeah, I already we already talked earlier about the ways that Biden has already done like markedly better at responding to COVID uh, than than Trump. It's shown in the numbers and the statistics and the data. It's shown the vaccination rates. 
It's shown in the infection rates, the amount of deaths, the amount of hospital hospitalizations. They have gone down massively. Are they perfect? Is it zero? Is it like even acceptably low? No, no, that's not what I'm saying. So I don't want anybody claiming that. But let's be clear, it would be absurdly worse under Trump. So do not try to claim that like Trump would have been better. I'll just so, speak louder, sir. Okay, this, you want to be politically correct, go ahead. What's really interesting about Xander Hall and his ilk is that they are obsessed with electoral politics and seem to see it as the be all and end all despite identifying themselves as leftists and in obsessed some cases- Obsessed with electoral politics, really? From a moral politics, point of view really? which we usually observe and analyze electoral politics to be military okay. and achieving anything good at best, we understand that the most important thing to do, especially nowadays, is to organize, create instances of direct action and mutual aid in order to remove dependence on the state, build dual power, and eventually sever all ties with those who claim to govern us. This is the way. While Zan did indeed cover the unionization of the Amazon warehouse in Staten Island, this seems to be the only bit of his content that covers any kind of dual power structures at all. And to be honest, I think this is why Xander Hall and his community have such a hard time listening to marginalized people who criticize him, because- Maybe because I don't put the word dual power structures in my title like a fucking nerd. Maybe because I want people to actually watch my videos, so I don't put- I don't make videos about dual power structures in the title or thumbnail. His content is focused on working within the system, trying to change said system from within. Kind of like a guy who joins the police force to try and make it better. And just like said cop, you either end up getting bullied out with the force, or becoming the thing that you hate. Meh, Batman, you either die a hero, or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Yeah. Joker Fucking moment. Idiot. Am I the only one who remembers him saying that Xan only uses leftism as an aesthetic? Does this absolute dolt think that food banks and community gardens that grow enough food in two weeks to feed a dog is going to dismantle the reliance on the state? Nah, man, we'll just do Chaz again. Huh? Tell me, you don't understand how politics- What the funniest thing too is, like as far as like these LARPers that like to claim they wanna like lose their dependence on the state or whatever, like me starting like doing the raising quail and like using their eggs as like a substitute for protein in my diet, is probably the closest that any lefty content creator has gotten to actually doing, like, like l reducing their dependence on the state and on like the the mean like the capitalist uh, uh, you know way of production and commodification, like opting out of that to some degree that I've really seen any content creator go into on the left, you know. Like, maybe, I imagine Bo the Fifth Column probably has some animals on his property. There's not a lot of guys out there in the uh, backwoods of Central Florida that do not have some chickens or something, because why the fuck wouldn't you? You can. Um, uh, like, yeah, I, I, I mean, but, yeah. I don't know. Wrong, Destiny told me to move. True. I, I feel like, I feel like uh, it's funny that, like, he says that when pretty soon I'll be doing content about like how to raise animals and sustainably harvest their eggs and meat in a way that does not make you reliant on one, the uh, factory farming industry for production of your of your like meat protein uh, and two allows you to more sustainably um, source your food uh, as well as make it, doing it in a way that uh, disconnects you from the unethical means of production of capitalism. Obviously, you'll still be purchasing grain, and you'll have to purchase food and stuff like that unless you start growing on your own, which you can. You absolutely can uh, grow your own grain, and, and not, like, for your for your birds in a not-too-massive space, um, if you've got the room for it. Like, but it, it's definitely a, a step in the right direction. How is that goal going, by the way? Well, look at the dono goal. We're working towards it. I'm try I'm aiming for end of December, early January to be when I move up to Seattle. I want it to still be snowing nice and heavy when I move up there. I do not want to miss the uh I do not want to miss 20 uh 2022 or 2023's like uh I just don't want to miss this winter in 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 Seattle. So trust me, I'm I'm really pushing. I'm really pushing to to be able to move up there by uh December or uh, early January politics works without telling me you don't understand how politics works because that is the dumbest thing that i've ever heard anyone ever say ever in a, in my life oh god i'm not to level what up what do i even say to that what do i what do i all i can say is he's a fucking idiot that is true i feel like i'm getting lobotomized is this how is this how nancy is that her name nancy oh is this how that kennedy girl felt because i feel it I feel it in my bones. Please, I challenge you.
Oh, I I don't own things, chat. Like I legitimately just have like my computer set up, my clothes, like a few personal items, and like my my hygiene product. That's all I'm bringing. Like I'm not bringing any like furniture or like I don't have like a bunch of clutter. I've got like two suitcases worth of clothes, uh, at most. Maybe one suitcase worth of clothes actually, uh, and like my computer stuff. And like hygiene products and oh yeah leveled up we finally did it level 77 let's go let's go my flying mount buy my flying mount or my fly my northrend flying um uh yeah like it's not gonna be like a u-haul truck it, it will not be a hard move this is my challenge to you i will give you a million a million bajillion gazillion dollars if you can find me one instance of food banks dismantling the reliance on the state so much that capitalism falls i you can have a million bajillion gazillion gazillion dollars do you Jizz. want a gazillion dollars? I do. So, and if you can't, you owe me a gazillion dollars. Uh, we shook on it. Can't take it back. Fuck you. <laughs> okay. Here's now. Here's where we Those get to rules. the reason why he made this video in the first place. To to white knight for his little queens, for his little Discord queens, uh, because Zan Zan said mean mean things about my Discord kittens. So now it's on like Donkey Kong, and I'm gonna tear you to shreds, cowboy. Your your ass is grass, and I'm gonna mow it. So DJ has a really bad habit of. Uh, infantilizing marginalized people and thinking that they can't stand up for themselves, so he has to jump in with his savior complex and do it for them. And now a word from our sponsors. Chat, get ready for something beautiful. Water. Yes! Now back to the show! Yeah! Hey, come on, baby! Come on! I'm gonna preface this segment with this. I'm gonna be talking about one of my best friends, Sophie from Mars. She is one of I don't think you guys realize how big a deal this is for me. Oh. Since the 26th, I have been grinding. Not as much as I should have been, but still pretty damn hard to get to level 77 and get my goddamn Northrend flying. It'll be a lot faster to reach level 70 or level 80 now. Now I can fly through Northrend. Uh, this is basically the 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 big thing that you have to reach to to get to max level. Thank you, Andhar. I really appreciate that. Hell yes. All right, I'll fly around collecting nodes really quick while we finish up this this last bit. One of my favorite people. She's one of my co-hosts on Red Planet. She meets. Or not this lab. last bit, she but this uh, to what it is today. last bit that I'll watch. She reinvigorated my love of all things based, and her eloquent commentary on the state of the world and what needs to be done today in order to improve the lives of people has inspired me to do the activism that I am involved with today. So in short, I'm biased. However, I'm well aware that bad faith actors won't care either way. So of course, I'm going to be biased as fuck in defending my friends. Fuck you. It's rad and cool and good actually to be biased and defend your friends. Also, I think the main thing to point out, in case you didn't figure it out already, is that I'm extremely biased against debate bros anyway. So if your main criticism of this video is that I'm I biased, can tell. then, well, duh. It's actually cool to be biased against things that are bad. Also, it's one letter away from pussy. To just flat out admit that you're biased while making this video, literally, literally, baby's first takedown video. Obviously, you're True. biased against things you don't like, but biased for things that you like. But because you're so self-aggrandizing, you think that everything that you think is good is objectively good, and everything that you think is bad is objectively bad. So you think that your bias is justified. I know, I, I know earlier I made the joke about uh, uh, main character. He actually believes it. He actually believes that he's the main character and that oh, all yeah. of his thoughts are objectively correct. Xana Hall made a video earlier this year in May. It's called Lefty YouTuber Sophie from Mars is a lying joke. Now, I don't know why I didn't True. put any spaces in Sophie's name there. Uh, just a bit weird, but let's move on. Now, the first thing I want to draw your attention to it's is how many names. views this video got. It's over 30,000. And his videos where he talks about unions is True. at easily 4K. And I want you to remember this before we get into this segment. Every piece of content that Xana Hall makes where he is attacking a marginalized person, be it a woman, a trans person, a black person, gets so many more views than any of his other content. His followers Damn. fucking love drama. Just Every say it, they're racist. He makes where he is attacking debate bros gets Just say so it, my many fans are views than any of his other content. His followers fucking love drama. And I know that DJ doesn't care about the voices of marginalized people. And you open this video by saying that drama gets more views. Do you not proofread your scripts? Like at all? Like, like, do you not just do like a second look over? Just, just, just skim it real quick. Do, do, do like a word, uh, do like a control F just to see if you, you know, did anything dummy? Did, did, any, did any dummy dumb mistakes? Do you not think about the words that are falling out of your mouth? Do you, do you just open your mouth and diarrhea just blah? 
how is people's interest in drama his fault? People like what they like. That's not his fault. He is just gaining the algorithm to grow. I would understand the criticism if I were just like jumping on board with some like politically charged conservative hate train like on some particular topic like i'd get it if that was what was being criticized are you shitting me do not let me get cucked do not let me get cucked. i'm gonna get cucked 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 oh no i don't think i got cucked i think i'm good they're probably gonna get the other one though i got the serenite though i'm happy they're probably getting that other node though i don't think there's any chance i can get that other serenite node i'm pretty sure they're coming in to get it but i cucked him out of that one is it gonna disappear if it doesn't disappear in five four Three, two, one. Okay, I don't think they're going for it. Maybe they're just going in here to do a quest. Leftism by bringing in more people. Holy shit. Literally, this entire video is make up something and then get mad at that thing and then blame other people for being mad at that thing. That's all this is. Also, you're one to talk given the fact that your drama video has more views than literally any of your other videos. So what does that say about you, cowboy? D did your fans only care about drama? I'm starting to think that they do. Interesting. Mm, Inch interesting. Interesting. Now, this video sucks for many reasons, but let's just have a look at the comments before we watch the video. And there's a reason that I'm doing this, and I'll tell you in a bit. Jesus fucking Christ, the aggression in her tweet. I don't see how people cannot see through such relentless, extreme language. It's a red flag, and I think there's a word for it, but I can't think of it. Oh, well. She couldn't just casually hate Bosch. It needs to be a great danger for everyone. Literally worst person ever. Which is wild, coming from someone who made video on Proud Boys. Okay, this one's funny as fuck to begin with, implying that there is aggression in a tweet. The reply is also extra funny because it's like, oh, you know, she's calling out someone who made video on Proud Boys. We don't even know the context of the video. It could be a video like saying that a Proud boys are good <laughs> I, I think the comment was pointing out that that sophie from mars has called out the proud boys and is aware of their behavior and their discussion and yet treats vosh like a greater threat and spends more of her time and energy trying to dunk on vosh and other debate bros or whatever than on the literal right-wing terror groups, the Nazi terror groups that are continuously gaining traction, popularity, political influence, and uh, hurting people. Good lord. DJ Mule sure loves the sound of his own voice, doesn't he? Why don't we look at some of your comments then, bud? Wow, this is a master lesson in abuser tactics, gaslighting, fry bullying, guilt tripping, lying, lying by omission, fake empathy, and more. Hope he gets what he wants, bad bunny. Those two were made for each other. Says overtly controversial opinions without evidence for 90 minutes. Gets responded to with evidence. Private Twitter deletes comments. He fucked around. He found out. Pin comment agreeing with him has four times less likes than basically all criticism, LMAO. Can't wait for the follow-up video where you talk about how debate bro communities are toxic because they pointed out the lies and abuse in this video, which will frame as harassment towards you. It's incredible how you went from being all holier than thou to immediately excusing and apologizing for abuse over an hour straight. Please never speak to a victim of abuse ever. That Lenin quote, not True. even being real, is the real cherry on top of this embarrassment. One of the worst attempted takedown videos I've ever seen on the internet. Weak arguments, no sources, admitting bias but carrying on as though he's being objective, truly bottom of the barrel work, dude. Dear r slash nice guy, please don't tell people that they have a moral obligation to support their abuser. It's really messed up. Did you just call the physical abuse Sand suffered by his parents mommy issues? No comments on the quality of the video as a whole, but as a survivor, it makes me really sad. Remember, kids, always cite your claims. This man didn't put down any sources, and the video sure does feel like it. Wow. Going by these comments, you sound like an abusive, manipulative, vile, garbage piece of shit of a human being. Wow. <laughs> Judging by those comments, this is a god-awful video. I True. guess we shouldn't, you know, go by the comments. You're lucky I didn't do this at the beginning. I thought about it, but it, it wouldn't have made sense. So we're doing it now. Also, I want to poison the well. Jesus Christ. That's respectable. <laughs> also, I find it incredibly weird and incredibly cringe that you would start with the comments before giving us any context for the video. It, it's almost like you're trying to poison the well and manipulate your audience into thinking that this is a bad video. Hmm. Interesting. Mm. And you're doing this all because mm. he called out your wannabe girlfriend. Like, 
can I can I can I get a weird can I get a weird champ in, in the chat, bros? Can I can I can I get a weird champ weird champ in it the chat? Weird uh, champ. Non binaries. Uh, my 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 chungets. Uh, chungers, chungets, and chung non binaries. Can we can we get a weird champ in the chat, please? Weird champ. I also find it extremely funny that you went through all of this effort to make yourself look like an absolute clown. Uh, just to defend your wannabe girlfriend, and she couldn't even be bothered to make a single tweet about you. Oh. Yikes. That's, That's sad. Rough. Uh, can we get a, now can we get an F in the chat, uh, gamers? Can That's we get an F in the chat, rough. gamers, for a, a, a failed white knight attempt? Ooh, friend zoned again. Ah, sh shut through the hive. Back to the friend zone. I got friend zoned again. So, what is it? What happened? Cherry Pred is quote tweeting Sophie in bad faith here about something that actually happened Bad now fight. i have to bring this up because this is something that's mentioned in this tweet so the sex cult stuff i was actually going to include the sex cult drama Let's in this go. video but the main victim who spoke out against this has victim. categorically said that she does not want people making content about what happened to her anymore and so in situations like this it's incredibly important to center the victim's voice them? so i will not they be them? talking about this stuff however with all that in mind and my actual knowledge of what happened it is a extremely relevant thing for people to bring up about xander hall then then why bring it up in the first place if she, if she doesn't want it talked about, why bring it up in the first place? Maybe because you want to manipulate your audience into thinking that he- Bringing up the sex cult drama really was when he decided to put the last nail in the coffin on his, uh, on his call-out video having any weight to it, huh? Like... Eh... I, I don't know how- like, for those of you guys that weren't there for it, all I can really say is go watch the video because there's no way to really get across how fast the flip was on the opinion on me in that drama upon dropping the evidence and the document with all the screenshots. Uh, it, it really was something else. It was in a sex cult. That's funny. For those of you who don't know, um, TLDR, there was a Discord server. Zan was flirting with girls. They weren't even his fans. They had a falling out over Star Wars. She claimed it was a sex cult. That's literally it. That's that's the whole thing. That's I can summarize it even better. I literally had a friend group in Discord and we just played video games and hung out all day. And there was an NSFW chat in there for us to talk in and fuck around in. And one of the people in the Discord had a mental breakdown, like I'm guessing a manic episode or something, uh, over being reminded of a triggering in event involving something in the Star Wars fandom and uh there was a huge argument uh they ended up like insulting and engaging in some pretty abusive language towards the other people there they got kicked out i woke up like four hours after that because i was asleep for all of it uh finding out this all happened and then they went to twitter to start like a meltdown now their meltdown was over like disagreement on star wars and stuff and it slowly sort of devolved into them getting sort of like pretty much coerced by the Twitter communities that hated me into claiming that I that into claiming that I had taken advantage of a fan for sexual favors. Um, but then the evidence didn't back that up either. And the story just kept on changing uh, as it needed to to make me look bad. And the story changing over and over ag again, like also isn't a very good look when you're trying to lie about someone. So it just ended up falling all apart. And then along came Thought Slime, who completely manufactured the sex cult allegations. They, like These claims literally had nothing to do with a sex cult or anything like that until Thought Slime came along and just like put those two words together and threw that concept into being. <laughs> like There was no sex cult as a concept uh, in name or anything like that until Thought Slime decided to claim it. Um, and then Thought Slime got BTFO'd the T, sis. But My life by is making wild. it some vague, oh, she 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 doesn't want to talk about it, and I will I will respect thy lady's wishes, but still bring it up anyway, so that way I can manipulate my audience into thinking that this person is worse than he actually is. Absolutely abhorrent. So apparently just for believing victims, Sophie here is being labeled as a bad faith actor who is spreading lies about the community. Really interesting here that this is about What the Trans, a trans community support network that does a lot of exposés on gender criticals and TERFs. The tweet in question here is when What the Trans okay. asked trans people who support Vosh why they support him when he's been so transphobic in the past. It didn't make sense. What the Trans then talked so about is how transphobic. Vosh fans that dogpiled reported this tweet to get the account suspended. As I said, 
This is an account that helps trans people a lot. What the trans even mentions that gender criticals and TERFs normally don't bother mass reporting trans activist accounts. They tend to focus on popular cis allies or popular trans people themselves. Okay, uh, here's what actually happened. And uh, I'll let Vonch explain. And I don't remember what part in the video this is, so it's gonna be a surprise for both of us. <laughs> Whoops. This person basically one day frustratedly um, started like, I think they replied to me in a tweet and started shit talking me. And my fans were Oof. like, hey, what the f is up? Because they were shit talking me in a very dedicated, very like, very, like, in their mind, they were an anime protagonist on a cliffside shouting down, like, the evil emperor atop, like, his war beast or something. I mean, like, it, like very, very taking it seriously. Very engaged. Very not well. Uh, people people in my community, like, talk with them. They made a big tweet where they were like, hey, seriously, so trans people, what do you like about Vosh so much? And literally hundreds of my fans responded saying how much they liked me. And then they deleted that tweet and ignored all of it. They were like, I just want to listen. And they didn't listen to any of it and argued with a bunch of my fans over how I'm actually bad. And eventually their thing got suspended because they got reported over something. And then people tried to frame it like I did something. And I hadn't even mentioned this person on stream yet. <laughs> on May 27th, what the trans asked, please don't make me regret this. Trans people only like Vosh. What has he done for you? Not asking to imply anything. I'd like to know. I'm not going to reply with anything. I honestly don't get it. Help. This was a lie. I I do I do like that Vosh took the joke from my video on the 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 drama on the Lonnie drama where I show like the descending screenshots of all the stolen money, uh, along with or all like the money like the transactions where money was stolen, along with the the NFL music playing. That's a that's a I can appreciate the reference. I, I don't know like what gave me the idea to use that song and make that gag. I just remember scrolling through the, the list of transactions and just being like mouth agape at how much money had been stolen from me. And I was just like, I feel like I need to have like a funny bit in the video where I show this scrolling. Otherwise, this is just depressing. Like I have to make this into a joke somehow. Like th this can't just be silently scrolling like... <laughs> Here's the money my abusive, like, ex who was, like, nearly 10 years older than me and took advantage of me when I was in an abusive home situation and offered me a way out of it. Like, like here's, here's the money she stole from my hard work. Like, I had to make it into a joke or it would just be fucking depressing. It, go it goes on for exactly that long. So yeah, a couple hundred responses. He fosters a community that is both very welcoming to trans people, but not overly coddling where I feel suffocated. I'm an edgy trans girl, so I find them more fun than many equivalent spaces online. I don't get thrown out for more darker, sarcastic humor. Plus, he helps me teach rhetoric that can be used for talking with transphobes in my own life. Sometimes my own family that has changed their mind slightly or at least allowed me to handle them when they try to detrans me. He doesn't do condescending hugbox thing. He gives good, steadfast arguments in support of trans rights. He doesn't show toxic positivity or real, um, but definitely sarcastic and edgy misogyny. While some claim he's a chaser, I've never seen it. He's done a lot of good work, pushing rightly and people left uh, and seems to generally give a shit about his views like cloud games. Okay, the trans community will simultaneously call anybody who who like displays what they consider to be a disproportionate amount of attraction to trans people a chaser and then claim anybody who says that they wouldn't have sex with a trans person uh m most usually like trans women pre-op they'll call uh, a transphobe like it it's 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 literally just weaponizing of people's identities in order to shit talk somebody that another person doesn't like online and and like trying to use sex and gender identity etc as the tool to do it it's very transphobic it's actually unironically transphobic you're literally playing into the propaganda the right likes to build claiming the trans people want you to fuck them and if they'll call you they'll say fuck me or you're a bigot you know like you're, you're literally like that yeah don't do that don't don't play into that propaganda as a cis person especially this goes on. When I was closeted and fairly doomer about transition, his video on trans women made me feel confident in my identity, and his Discord queer chat was incredibly kind and friendly. I've watched him debate turfs and completely dismantle the logic and video from trans people. Um, is Discord the first online community that been part of because something is non-binary? Maybe blah, blah, blah. what TT got? Uh, WTT got banned by Candace Owens fans and her tweets. Look, to be honest with you, I don't fucking care. They were banned for like 24 hours or whatever. Everyone catches 10 fans, especially when they argue in the comments of conservatives. Um, or like stir up drama or whatever. Like it, it wasn't anything. They treated it like some kind of grand act of censorship, but I didn't talk about them at all. Yeah, it was 12 hours. They got 12 hours spent. Like, okay, whatever. Like, I don't even care. Oh, and and also he says, um, this absolute dog shit statement. It's really funny because in my video that I did on Vosh, I had so many people in my comments telling me that it's good and correct to criticize Blair White and Candace Owens. And no, for a start, if you're cis and white, it isn't your place to Holy focus shit, on those I people. forgot about this. It isn't this. your place to tell trans people and black people who best represent their community. Uh, uh, you're not able to criticize, uh, any, any minority ever? Um, uh, so if you criticize me, uh, as a, as a, as a white male, um, know your place, whitey. Also, uh, you have a video uh, 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 about Dave Rubin being a pick-me-gay. Oh, what? Ooh. Huh? 
You Ooh. can't talk about minorities. Ooh. I get it, you're bi, but still, he's a minority, and you shouldn't be able to criticize minorities ever. You can't call him that. That's homophobic. How dare you? How how dare you criticize a minority? What's wrong with you? True. Maybe you just need to sit your white ass down and, and check listen, your privilege, mayo boy. Maybe, yeah, sit your white ass down. I didn't watch this video. I sat my white ass down and I listened because I am a good ally. I'm a, I'm a good boy. Please date me. I am so desperate. I'm such a good boy. Please. Zanahol even says that someone's political beliefs can be a good indication of their moral values, which is pretty funny because he supports the Democrats unironically, and they are constantly throwing marginalized people under the bus <laughs> just like him. So later in the video, he says this. Uh, you will find here. four times out of ten, I'd say, that a content creator in your lane that you've discovered who you might want to collab with, become friends with, who you might even find enjoying their content and becoming sort of a fan of in a way, already hates you before you even know their name or before you even knew they exist. It's absolutely wild that he said that with no self-reflection. <sighs> yeah, I want I wonder what I wonder why that's a tendency. I what I wonder why I might be frustrated that it feels as though every time like some new left-wing content creator comes along on the left that gains some prominence, they they find out who I am from some telephone game list of lies that people have made up. Uh, that like much like DJ Mule himself, they don't even have misrepresented clips out of context. To try to, like, they'll just say that I said a thing and not even provide an out-of-context clip. Because I'm going to be honest, I, I feel like I do a pretty decent job of keeping my nose clean. I make my fuck-ups, but overall, I think I do a pretty decent job. I think I'm, I'm fairly salient not to, like, say stuff and word things carefully enough that it's hard to clip me out of context in, in ways that are not, like, pretty obviously, like, oh, he's being clipped out of context here, this, or this is him memeing or something. Like, I, I, I think I, I generally do a good job at it, but still, like, it's just lie and say I said a thing I didn't uh don't even like provide a clip uh not even one misrepresenting what I actually said to try to make your claim uh just say that I said a thing and and people will believe it and the next thing I know I've got this is what happened with Noah Sampson where I literally just stumbled across his content and next thing I knew uh apparently uh apparently he was uh one of these 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 anti-debate bro Bernier bus type people and on why this would be. Maybe the reason that people don't want to work with you and that your reputation precedes you is because you're a fucking man-child who throws his toys out of the pram every time a woman online disagrees with you. Why would anyone want to work with you? Uh, your hottest take is like the new Lord of the Rings show because most people online hate it. Uh, no, most people online do not hate the show. It's actually, like, by people who actually watch it, it's being rated very highly and the views are very high. It's just being review-bombed online by the right, because brown people. With someone like that, dude? <laughs> Oh my god, we get it, we get it, we get it. You're you you like to LARP as a lefty, you use lefty aesthetic, we get it, we get it. Dem dem demo crap demon demon crap bad because they are they are demons and demon crap bad. Oh boy, I should see a doctor. Uh, uh de de demo crap demo crap bad. Demo crap is like Hit Hitler, uh Nancy Pelosi. I know I already used this joke, but Nancy Pelosi, uh uh she is That's Hitler because Hitler bad. Also, I love how I use that joke in a satire video, and he's actually doing it. Very funny. Wow, yep. wow. Uh, 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 I'm I'm a leftist. I hate liberal. If if you call me a liberal, that's like saying that I support the Raiders football team when actually I support the New England Patriots. Uh, those are the only two sports ball teams that I know. Uh, I am it's, so smart. I how dare you say that I'm on the opposite sports team? Because that's all I care about is you knowing which team I'm on. That that's all I care about. Even even though even though earlier. He said that Democrats winning was a good thing. But I'm a communist. I'm an anarcho-communist. Hey, 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 anarcho-communist. Wow, I love the projection. Plus, if, if, ugh. so if we're, if we're going by that logic, then I everything the that I've heard about you is that you're a self-righteous, morally aggrandizing, condescending, savior complexer asshole. So by that virtue, anyone who would want to work with you is a self-righteous, morally aggrandizing, self-centered, I forgot all the words that I used, asshole. Are we really going by that logic? Because you just kind of implicated your Discord kittens. Is that, is that the road we're going with? Because I don't think you want to go down that road, buddy. Because literally everything that I've heard about you is not good. I don't think I've seen a single person defend you, so...
Zanahol also uses a sanest term here in the beginning of his video. The word in itself is widely regarded sanest. as a word that should never be used in any context. It's the shortening of schizophrenic. On the point of sanism, Zanahol seems to really focus on the fact that anyone who disagrees with him has mental issues. Now, as an ADHD, OCD, and anxiety having boy, and big advocate for mental health awareness, Wait, he... Oh no, he's ableist! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no, he's just as bad! What I like to try and remind people as often as I can is that pretty much everybody has mental health issues. It's kind of part and parcel of living under capitalism. So this scapegoat is kind of one that you could use for just about anybody if you do like a minute or two of digging into their content or social media posts. Also, this big thing where he implies that people with mental issues need validation from the internet, from fake internet points, is a huge sweeping statement that misses a lot of important things to remember. Namely, that not everybody with bad mental health issues is actually on the internet. This paints a pretty bad picture of people like me who suffer from learning disabilities, are neurodivergent, and or suffered from structural sanism and or ableism. The important thing to remember about this is that Sophie, a trans woman, received a relentless amount of harassment, not just from Xanderhal's community, but from debate bro communities as a whole, relentless. just for this thread. This two minutes of hyperbole and conjecture have resulted in some of the worst harassment that my friend has ever seen. Hyperbole and if you know about the effects that online harassment has on people, then you don't need me to tell you just how bad you that was. You've been lying so, to hurt someone's please, reputation? For the love of God, this is a 90 minute video. Please just show the clip. Instead of trying to gaslight your audience into thinking the person that personally annoys you is a terrible person. Please, just show the clip. Please. Buddy, I wouldn't I would I wouldn't do that if I were you. Um given the fact that you use ableist slurs in the past, I I I wouldn't do that if I were you. It's called being a hypocrite. Did he just blame his mental illness, or mental illness in general, largely on capitalism? Yes. <laughs> I, I, I have I have ADHD and autism because capitalism. Um, I I say every word that that comes to my brain. Um, and I get hyperfixations because capitalism. It, it, that's capitalism for you, baby. Because I can't take accountability for my own actions. Capitalism. Hell yeah, the ultimate scapegoat. To be fair, capitalism is in some way uh, responsible for a lot of the media that I hyperfixate on. So I guess, I guess there 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 may be a, might be a little bit of a uh, little bit um, of of uh, of of you know a weight to that maybe. <laughs> uh, True. I mean, sound like I I I like capitalism. I don't. But you get what I mean, man. I have been waiting for this moment because we are about to get radioactive levels of cope. Let's go. Oh, so he can defend his Discord queen, his little kitten, his wannabe girlfriend. So uh, let's get into the uh, next person he feels he needs to be a savior for, just to get in her pants. Uh, Bad Bunny. So his community here are implying that Sophie's relation to Kira Chats, old name Bad Bunny, and another of my good friends, is another reason for steering clear of her? But what exactly has Kira done? Okay, so the Kira Chat situation is a little bit different to the Sophie situation. And while I don't want to say that one form of harassment is worth another with she this, done? I do want to point out that my friend let, Kira let, has had let, outright let's find misogynist out. harassment directed towards her from huge YouTube channels such as Penguin Zo, aka Critical, the H3H3 podcast, and pretty much every single debate bro you can think of since 2020 and a little bit earlier, I think. I've been in Kira's Twitch community for a good few years now, and of course she is one of my co-hosts on Red Planet. The main issue that these huge YouTubers had with Kira is this clip that I'm sure some of you even recognize. Speech about how I need subs and to get the stream going if you like the content, blah blah blah. How that five dollars a month. Five dollars a month. Now, as most people in Kira's community know, you heard her chat. Ooh, why get donating. Why not? Why not show the? Why not show the whole clip? Show the whole clip. I guess I'll do it for you. And to get the stream going if you like the content, blah blah blah. How that result in zero subs? There are regulars here. Five dollars a month. How do you have hours of time to watch me and not five dollars? I don't know, what are you doing with your life where you have hours of time to watch Twitch 
and true. Not five dollars to donate for the content that you're watching. Donate because to me, like, chat. People just really have no, really don't respect me as a content creator. Now, as most people in Kira's community true. know, respect me, chat. What is happening right now, chat? I'm persona. mad. She's got one of the nicest, most understanding communities that I've ever been a part of on Twitch, and she really does a lot of amazing content and shines a light on issues that are woefully okay. underrepresented in the online leftist Twitch space. For example, at the moment, recently, I'm she's been going hard on the Israeli genocide of Palestinians. <laughs> So the comments here are positioning her as a clout chasing woman who simply does things for money and not because she has any actual moral standpoints or ideology at all. So True. it's also worth mentioning that Kira Couldn't have put it better myself. Handle, had a bit of a chud phase. One that she's actually really open about and references regularly even on her oh, stream today. Phase, which is say. good to see because when people are unlearning a lot of the stuff they learn in formative years regarding politics and people's civil rights, they can often forget that it was incredible. I want to say, by the way, there are literally logs of Bad Bunny outright saying she is going to grift and pretend to be a lefty for as long as she can get away with it and make as much money doing so as she can in that time. Like, I, I, I... It's really easy to fall down the rabbit hole of alt-right opinions. Something that Xanderhal should be incredibly familiar with, no? Considering... this. He also said in his last video on Sophie that Hunter Avalone, who is a former right-wing Nazi white supremacist conservative, is an example of someone whose politics were... <laughs> Was Hunter Avalone a... Nazi? I don't- I don't think Hunter Avalon was a Nazi. What? I- I don't think Hunter Avalon was... a Nazi. Do you think that maybe it might be worthwhile to, like, be a little bit... careful about how you refer to the past political beliefs of content creators when it, it's relevant to, like, the discussion at hand? Like. I, he, he wasn't a Nazi. I don't know what to say. I, I just, there's no evidence of that. Bad, but is a good person. But apparently that grace is not extended to Kira Chats. Wonder why. Debate he goes on to Nazi say that he true. found out that he was banned in Kira Chats stream and then says. Now, would you guys like to guess what exactly got me banned and blocked by a Bad Bunny here? Oh, this is such a funny story. I literally just came into her chat one day and hung out for a little bit. And I said, I have to go. I have to stream in a couple hours. And then she got mad and started yelling at me. Saying I was advertising my stream in her chat. Mind you, I was averaging like 600 viewers at the time, and she was averaging like 200. And I had raided her like at least once at that point, and also defended her during like the attack she was getting for the $5 a month thing. Because her fans had told me in my community, her fans in my community told me she was joking. Um, she was not joking. It is very obvious she was not joking. Um, uh, especially as you get to know her more through her content. Yeah, she was very clearly not joking. Um, wait, Titanium looks exactly the same visually as Cobalt? That's a little bit cringe. I didn't even notice that I was- I thought I was mining Cobalt there. I didn't even realize that was Titanium. I, I kinda- kinda hate that it looks- it doesn't have like a cool like look to the- or- I don't know. Um, anyway, yeah, so she just like banned me from the chat, uh, like shortly after that and unfollowed me on Twitter, like, blocked me on Twitter, and I was like, what the fuck? What did I do? Like, Jesus, we were chill literally, like, hours ago. What the fuck? And, uh, and so then I, I talked about it on stream, and then I moved on with my day, uh, or with my life, and then it turned out she was a grifting, uh, piece of shit, and so I, I covered that. Now, it's not because uh, of any, um, I'm, I'm not, like, trans or gay or anything like that, or bi, so it's not because of her bigotry, so I, I will let you guys know it is not because I am part of any <laughs> that was okay. That that went hard as fuck. That went hard as fuck. <laughs> nah, she, Bad Bunny doesn't remember, guys. I'm not trans or or POC or anything, so Bad Bunny doesn't hate me because of that. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> that was a, I forgot that I made that joke. That went hard as fuck. Any marginalized groups that uh, Bad Bunny has um, a bigotry towards? <laughs> well, I see what you've done there, Xander Hall. You have made a loaded <laughs> statement. You presented offering. Yeah, have I made a loaded statement, DJ Mule? I, are you f have have you heard of a loaded statement before? I I feel like you might be somewhat familiar with that concept. Yeah, uh, yeah, um, yeah. That doesn't surprise me. A loaded statement. It's not like you haven't made any of those. Here as a bigot, without actually providing any evidence that she is a bigot. Huh. I wonder why people think she's a bigot. I guess that's beyond me. Oh I yeah. Don't know. Let's just let's just blow up these. These are confirmed her, by the way. Yeah, just keep those on screen for a hot minute. Yeah. Hmm. 
Are we going to get the black bisexual man quote? Where she talks about how she would literally literally vomit at the at the thought of dating a black bisexual man? That's a good quote. I love that one. That's a that's a classic Bad Bunny quote. <laughs> Kira Chat's quote as she goes by now. Rip my circadian rhythm? Nah, dog. This is my circadian rhythm. Oh, what the hell? Now, what's really fucking frustrating here is that Xanderhal again Fuck does King no self reflection and turns to the attack on Kira. Well, he'd already begun the attack at the start of the video, but he then goes hard and brings up her past alt-right opinions, and even brings up some screenshots that are fairly popular amongst people who like to harass her, where she's said slurs in Discord channels. And all he really does here is just say that she's like a clout chaser and a big- In one of those screenshots, she literally says she's pretending to be a lefty for as long as she can make money off of it. Just- just want to remind y'all. Yeah, and he also talks about how he's got like so much evidence that she's like a grifter and a bigot. But this is all stuff that she's done in the past, dude. And it's all stuff that she's apologized for and has done so much work to unlearn and try and make amends for the bad that she yeah. did to people. Don't show that, that screenshot Nothing really though. stands up regarding that. Like, don't show you don't that really when have I put that on much screen. That she is a bad person now. You're just pissed off that your reputation in how your harmful bastard preceded you once again and it prevented you from networking with someone who is actually a really cool content creator. And if you want to talk about how people have got evidence that someone is a grifter and a clout chasing piece of shit, well, I mean. You're watching this video, right? This video in which I wrote 15,000 words about you doing exactly that. But now nah, he spends like 10 minutes yeah. talking about how she had harmful opinions. How'd that work out? To talk about the fact that she's left all that behind and realized. How'd that work out, DJ Mule? How'd it work out? Like how bad it was. He just skips a bunch of so-called evidence because there's too much of it. Bro, bro, look at the length of this video. You clearly don't care about this as much as you're saying you do. This has to be a satire. This has to be a joke. It's not. Oh, I wonder. I wonder why. I thought. I, I thought why it was it's too. not extended to a bad bunny, huh? Even though I won't extend it to anyone who I don't want to sleep with, huh? That's funny. I wonder why. People are crazy. Oh, I'm sorry. That's ableist language. We can use language that DJ approves of. That's insane. Um, um, it's 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 Nanners. it's bad. And uh, it's the it's the bare minimum when people I don't like uh move away from the alt right, and I don't fully believe them. Uh, but even though uh my my little kitten uh. Uh, said so many, so many slurs that I can't even fit them all on screen. Um, um, sure. wh why aren't you being nice to her? You actually wh can't. Why are you being mean? Wh why are you being mean to my little kitten, huh? Do you, do you need me to come over there and, and, and read you, uh, the conquest of bread and bore you to death? Congratulations. The, the Discord kitten meme is like, oh, it makes my skin crawl, but because you just know it's true, you know? Like, like, the more times I see this DJ Mule video, the more it starts to seem maybe a bit more likely that, yeah, yeah, DJ Mule's out here simping. He's out, he, he's out here simping and simping ain't pimping. She, she doesn't say the N-word and, Ooh. um, publicly anymore. C congrats. Do you want a fucking medal? Do you want the Nobel Prize for doing the bare minimum? Congratulations. It's okay it. for me, but not for thee. How can you be such a smug little troll throughout the entire first half of this video? Then pull out every excuse in the book to defend someone you like. Not just like, but like like. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. In a tree like. Do you not see the hypocrisy? Maybe it's because the sun has melted your brain from your little chrome dome up there. No or maybe the protection. power of pussy is just too strong. But for the love of God, Resist. how do you not realize this? Resist! How can you spend the entire first half of this video, if not more, criticizing someone for something, and then making up excuses left and right when it's someone that you do like? It's almost like you have no consistency in your morals and you just like making videos on people who personally annoy you. I really don't understand how, how you can be so manipulative, yet so smug in the same vein and think no one's going to call you out for it. Or maybe you do and you just don't care if people call you out for it because you're so self-aggrandizing that you think everyone who... I don't know, uh, what's the word? I, holy shit, I can't even think of the word. Anyone who uh, 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 criticizes you, that's a word, I'm a fucking idiot. Anyone who criticizes you is wrong and dumb and bad and you shouldn't listen to them. Which is it, DJ? Are you just a fucking idiot? Or can you not take criticism, especially from marginalized voices? 
Are you too busy gaslighting your audience into thinking people you personally don't like are terrible people? That you can't even see the words that are coming out of your mouth? Oh, I guarantee you if you saw that, you'd be like, Uh, no duh, you can't see words because they're words and you can't see them and I don't understand, uh, uh, wordplay because, uh... He would say that. Does he not know what in I actually do believe he would, like, be so confused by that joke that he, he would actually be like, How can you... They literally say that I can't see the words coming out of my mouth. Does he not understand that you can't see words? They're literally vocal sounds made from your mouth with different voice with different air tubes and whatnot going through your esophagus i don't know how how voice works there's some shit like that there, there's some biology bullshit that happens in your in your throat that makes you make voice voice stuff happens and you know you get the you, you, it makes you make sounds um some did i get that right i think i got that right I, th I think that was more or less good enough for government work that's good enough for a public school education Whose vid are we debunking? We're not debunking anybody's vid. We're watching Ecofish's video. Um, as a matter of fact, I think here is actually a good place to wrap it up because I do not want to react to the whole thing on stream. I want to send you guys to actually give the watch time and the views and all that to this channel. And we've watched literally two hours of the three and a half hour video. So I don't want to steal any more of the content, you know? This is a very, very good takedown video. Those of you who've joined me, in, uh, in reacting to it. I think you've probably already had your interest peaked quite a lot in it. And I'm glad that I'm going to be able to leave you guys with something to uh, honestly migrate into to go watch after the stream ends here because I am going to wrap things up right now. First, I'm going to I'm gonna grab this uh, this herb, this adder's tongue. And uh, and we're going to go to the uh, to the bank really quick to wrap things, to just, uh, just put things away and wrap things up. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this segment, please consider leaving a like, subscribe, ring the bell icon, and, and you know, turn on all notifications so YouTube actually tells you when I go live or I upload a new video. Um, make sure you go subscribe to uh, Ecofish, uh, whose link I will have pinned in the comments, as well as I'm going to drop another link to this video in the chats right now so that you guys can all go like it, subscribe, uh, and, and go send support, okay? Go watch the video. Go send your watch time. Go send your 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 support uh their way because like it it helps it actually fucking helps so yeah go do that uh it's pog as fuck and based as fuck and uh if you want to see more from me and you want to uh you know see more from me on the internet make sure to follow my social medias all linked down below including my instagram twitter tiktok and my fan discord uh, i am also building a guild in world of warcraft classic wrath of the lich king i am playing on pagel us uh, uh, in terms of World of Warcraft, and I am playing a human warrior named Xanderhal. I'm trying to build a guild, so make sure to join my Discord server and hop on WoW and make a character if uh, you want some help leveling and uh, potentially playing WoW with me. I'm going to be hanging out in VC, doing raids, running dungeons with people, helping people level, and just generally playing a lot of WoW with fans and stuff like that because I'm I'm a big WoW fan. This is the best expansion, so yeah. Uh, consider hopping on if you want to join me. You can also support me financially by donating, subscribing, or gifting a sub on my website, xanderhall.com forward slash live. Or you can support me through YouTube, Twitch, Streamlabs, Stream Elements, or even through Patreon. With all that said, though, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You guys are based as fuck for uh, all the support you send my way. And have a good one.